awesome donations here for you guys. This one from Glitch the Gamer for $100 says, greetings from the front row. Had to donate for Pokemon. Can we get some hype? hype. And our awesome run is ready to go. What's up, guys? Uh, so we're ready to go? Three, two, one, go. Hello, everyone. I am Gunner Maniac, and this is my lovely couch. I'm Araya. I'm Pokey Eye. I'm Shenanigans. And today, we're going to be running Pokemon Sapphire. Uh, this game is particularly brutal as far as Pokemon speedruns go, and Pokemon speedruns are already kind of brutal. Um, so you see there, we chose a one character name and uh, chose the girl character. Both of those are important for the run. Uh, we'll talk about the choice of May later, but uh, for now, naming ourselves one character was important because it's um, every time the game has to print a character, it wastes a frame. So uh, over the course of the run, that adds up a lot. Okay, so uh, this is a pretty standard Pokemon intro. We're gonna mash some text boxes. We're gonna set some times. Um, so now's actually probably a pretty good time for donations for the first uh, minute or two. And then we have the hardest trick in the run right at the beginning. Donations at all? We have plenty of donations here. I have one for $5 from Rocks Monster. Put this towards the frame perfect punch honk. Donation train. I have another donation here from Space Breakfast for $8. That punch out run sounds so hype. Let's make sure we get it. And we do have a little ways to go on that uh, Mike Tyson's punch out challenge. We are at $35,000 out of 75,000. So get on that $5 donation train, please. Okay, so what we are about to attempt to do is to manipulate the stats and nature of the Pokemon that we're going to use for pretty much the whole run, Mudkip. Uh, what happens <laughs> is you... <laughs> we're going to save, and then we're going to soft reset the game. And then when you do that, uh, the RNG is going to start from the same point. Uh, each time, so as long as you take the same amount of times to take the same actions, you'll always get the same result. So in this case, this is a one-frame window at 60 FPS, um, which, if you know anything about that, is a super tiny time window, so let's see how it goes. So we're gonna get some information here from the Puccina and the Mudkips. This is already the wrong one, but I'm gonna check how far off I am. Sassy, that's one frame early. Felt not bad. So we wanna see a female pooch, but it's not a female pooch. One frame early. <laughs> Come on, female pooch. Male pooch. All right. No. Oh, <laughs> One frame late, <laughs> looking for a naughty mudkip. And the annoying thing is that the uh, mudkip that is one frame late has the exact same tells as that the correct mudkip has. All right, that's it. That's totally it. Okay. okay. 
Okay. Yes. Okay, yes, there we go. Let's go. Not bad. Yeah, not we'll bad. We'll take five. Definitely not bad. We'll roll. That is the hardest trick in the run, by far, for sure. Yeah. Um, maybe not the scariest trick, because it's not so punishing to miss it, but uh, that wasn't so bad. So this Mudkip is absolutely insane. It has a plus attack nature, 27 attack IV, perfect special attack, uh, one off perfect speed, a little low on defense, but we can deal with it. Um, and it's the best Mudkip that exists for quite a long time uh, on that seed. Uh, so you see I named my Mudkip uh, one character as well. And that is going to save an enormous amount of time because every time you use uh, move with Mudkip, every time you send Mudkip out, it says his name and it saves five, six, seven frames depending on like which evolution it is. So minutes over the course of the run. Um, so now we just hope we don't get too many encounters, you know, standard Pokemon stuff. <laughs> Average is, I don't know, 2.5 or so. It's nice in this game you get repels pretty early compared to other Pokemon runs. Yeah, yeah, it's it's actually really nice. Thank you, Game Freak. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, you, you remember I mentioned this game is pretty brutal, right? Well, besides the encounter rate, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be saving a lot in this run. There's like pretty much nothing you can do sometimes about dying, so I think I have 16 saves planned for this run. <laughs> uh, unlucky. So I actually can't get another encounter here because uh, you get four tiles of immunity after you get an encounter, so uh, impossible to get another one here. So the first fight I'm going to be saving for is the first fight in the game. <laughs> uh, it's actually pretty unlikely to lose this fight, but if you do lose, it's super, super bad, and it actually ruins one of the uh, cooler tricks in this run. So I'm going to save and hope that we cannot lose the first fight in a Pokemon game, which I know chat's going to make fun of me for. This critical pound just does so much damage yeah, if he, happens. If he leads with Leer and crits, it does half your health. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well. It's not what you want to see, but that's okay. Just don't miss. Okay. Five roll. Also, tackle is a great move. Yeah. All right. All the way. I believe in you. Nice. Good. Good. Okay. All right. Good start. <laughs> Uh, you can actually you can actually die from 11 <laughs> there. Yeah. If he crits uh, in high rolls, it does 11. So super scary fight, but and not, and not nothing you can do. I mean, you can just you spam tackle. Yeah. And pray. Which Plus is RNG. 95% accurate for some reason. Yeah, this is 95% accurate. The run. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, we'll be using uh, almost primarily 95% <laughs> accurate moves. Uh, but anyway, uh, we just have a little bit of cutscene action here, so probably a good time for a couple donations. I have some great donations here. I have one from Sailor Eli for $12. Here's $12 for number 12 in the Pokedex. My favorite Pokemon, Butterfree. Let's get a Pokedex donation train going. And I have another donation here from Kept in Stitches for $255. Wow. Who says, Pokemon Sapphire was my first video game and Torchic was my first starter and is still my favorite Pokemon. If you disagree, vote with your wallet. <laughs> Captain Stitch is raising the ante there really quickly. <laughs> we have time for more? Uh, one more. I have a $25 donation here from Folk Punk Druid, who says, "Longtime watcher, first time donator. Good luck with the Pokemon Sapphire run, and shout outs to the crowd for dancing and making the breaks between the runs all the more entertaining. Can I get a hype? hype. Oh, that was a good hype. Okay, so now we can run, but that just means that moving is way more scary because one of the tricks I'm setting up requires a super specific step count, so I actually can't take extra steps towards the run. Um, but it's not so bad. Running is uh, not nearly as hard as biking, which we'll see later. It also doesn't have to take it very far. It's only after the Wally cutscene, basically. Okay, so we heal and we save. <laughs> uh, <laughs> again, this fight is not particularly likely to kill you, but it's very bad if it happens. Um, and uh, like I just mentioned, I have to keep a very specific step count. So even if I wanted to take an extra heal in the Pokemon Center, I can't because um, it loses a lot of time, uh, and it is very slow and ruins the minute. 
So this guy is speed tie with you, and that is the absolute worst thing that can happen. Speed tie lost Growl on turn one. Uh, and then Tail Whip plus critical damage can do like half your health in one turn. Okay, he's pretty much set up the perfect scenario for himself here. <laughs> uh, I do, yeah, so now I can't mud slap. Um, I do want to mud slap because it's 100% accurate, but that is why I didn't because speed tie lost Growl would make it not kill. We'll take that. Not dead, fuck you. Not dead. <laughs> that is, <laughs> you're pretty much happy if you're not dead. Oops. Okay, something you may notice he just did there is he bonked on the trainer after fighting him. And the reason he did that is to cancel out the turn frame. In this game, turn frames take longer to do than bonks. So if you bonk after being stationary instead of doing the turn frame, it actually saves a few frames. He's going to do that a lot throughout the run. Yep, I'll do it right after the smart here too. Also, you saw me do some scared movement there. <laughs> I uh, got a weird turn frame and then, uh, like I said, you can't take any extra steps, so. Yeah. Is there a pulse? Super nice. You don't have to worry about encounters as much anymore. And I like actually cannot take an extra. I can't even fix it if I take one here. So very scary. Mm -hmm. Even though it's really easy to not mess up, it's so bad if you do. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the trick that I am setting up is wingle manip. I am going to manipulate a specific wingle uh, that I'll show you why it's specific, but it also doubles as the Pokemon that we'll use for fly. I'll save on a specific tile, and it works similarly to Mudkip Manip, where uh, we're going to try to hit a certain frame window, and then we're going to react to the movement that the NPCs give us um, after we load up the game, and that tells us which frame we hit. We take a movement path that corresponds to that frame and manipulate the Mudkip. Um, which we'll also use an audio cue, so quiet time for that one. But until then, we have this long Ralt cutscene, so you can probably read a donation or three. All right, well, I do want to remind everyone that we have a couple of incentives for this run. If you donate, you can help to choose Kyogre's name. You can also help to name the Wingle. Uh, currently in the lead for Kyogre is Big Hug with $2,377, and in the lead for Wingle is Tuin with $2,529. Now close behind that is Jotaro, many question marks and exclamation points. If you would like to change Kyogre's name to Magikarp, that is what is uh, behind Big Hug. Yeah, we are actually about to name that Wingle, so. Oh, great, all right, so get those donations in quick if you wanna do a uh, come from behind how do Wingle I, name. How do I spell the one that's winning? Um, Tuen, T-U-E-N. Okay, all caps? Um, no, just the first letter. Okay. Cap. Is it time? It is pretty much time. All right, well, Wingle's getting named Tuen. Get those donations in for children. <laughs> I mean, you got like 20 seconds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, get those donations in for, uh, for Mike Tyson's punch out bonus game. <laughs> Need serious I have one need right here. Test. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, it's all good. I have one right here from Just Gus for uh, $250. It says, let's punch out cancer. Always love seeing Pokemon at GDQ. Nice. nice. Good. Okay. Still more quiet. <laughs> Audio cue here for the ball toss. Surely that's good. <laughs> Seems good. And two nice. in a day. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so during that manip, he was looking at the NPC movement to know what path he had to run to encounter the Wingle. There are four different paths that work. Now we're safe to heal to full HP set up a repel because we got to run through some grass and do a save. So what you're about to see me do here is pass the first spinner of the game. I'm going to run to a particular tile below him to force him to look in a direction and then walk past him as not to get seen. So that looked pretty fast, and I'll explain it more. Uh, I'll do one right after this fight, so it'll probably make more sense. So in this game, there are trainers called spinners. They look around randomly, and if they look at you, you have to fight them, which is obviously super slow. That guy has like six wormholes. It's awful. Um, so what you do is 
when running in this game, if you run right past the spinner, they'll always look at you. But if you run to a tile close to them, you can force them to look in a direction. Spinners can only spin so often, so if you then buffer walk up to the tile that you need to pass them on, that's not good. You can consistently uh, pass them. Oh, <laughs> not like this. Yeah. This guy has three moves, Howl, Sand Attack, and Tackle. I feel oh that's unreasonable. God. This is horrible. Oh. oh my goodness, come on. Okay. Gotta heal. Yeah. It's pretty much as bad as this fight can go. <laughs> and we haven't even seen the worst of the sand attacks. Okay, howl and that turns good. Just eyes on the prize. Okay. Two more. Nine. Right. Okay, uh, just not tackle on that turn, really. Just come on. Good HP, perfect. Just perfect. Good, nice. okay. Okay. What a beast. <laughs> scary stuff. Yeah. These early fights are just so scary, like all of them. Yeah. Just they're, play on tackle. Yeah, there's just not much you can do the, uh, in early <laughs> game to, to, I don't know, there's not much you can do for a lot of fights. This game is evil. Yeah. Um, when you're doing world record attempts, your expected chance to finish a run start to finish without saving is about 2.9%, to put it into perspective. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm gonna do another spinner pass here, running to the tile below him and then walking past him. Nice. Um, and I'll do the same thing for this trainer. This is actually a rotator, this next one. Uh, she always spins in a specific uh, pattern, but uh, the same logic applies or I'm gonna force her to look left. That was kind of shaky, but that's okay. Um, and now we make our way to the first gym. And this is the fight where our friend, the very special Wingle, is going to come into play. I do have to say for this fight as well. Um, <laughs> but this Wingle is not just any Wingle. It is a 1% encounter for the max level of level five. It has a plus special attack nature, and it has a high special attack IV. It also has low enough defense and HP combined to die to this Geodude in two hits because our only move to kill this Geodude right now is Mud Slap. That takes six Mud Slaps. It has a speed fall animation for every one of them. It's super slow. So what we do is send out our friend, the Wingle, and Water Gun, which brings him super low. Actually, I think that still dies um, to Mud Slap. And Wingle dies there, so we don't have to split the XP with him. And ideally, just finish with one Mud Slap. Okay, yeah, I did <laughs> die from there. Thanks. Super, super cool strat, um, because the Wingle, we also need a Pokemon to use Fly with, right? So it just saves like 40 seconds to, for this fight alone to do that. And now we know Water Gun, and we can uh, make it on our own without the help of our boy, Tuin. Also, the fights in these gyms um, are optional trainers, but you absolutely need to beat them. Uh, yeah, first of all for Water Gun, but also to get marshed up right in time. Something interesting about the Wingle strat is if you critical with the Wingle, then you have to reset because, and that's not usually the case, usually criticals are good, but because the Wingle would get all the experience and Mudkip still would not know Water Gun, so you can't beat the Geo next Geodude's fast, so he would have to reset if that happens. Yep. It's happened to me three times in a row and runs before, even though it's only one. <laughs> so this is actually the first fight that we don't have to save for. <laughs> nice. Um, but don't worry, it's coming back for Roxanne. Uh, this is just a one water gun KO, and uh, this fight is also optional, but lots of XP. You just need these levels for Roxanne. She's a crazy hard fight. Yeah, this fight, this fight is actually the worst, but we have really good HP for it right now, so we could get the epic, super fast fight. We'll see. Yeah. Something okay. we may not have talked about is Torrent. When you're below a third HP, you get a 1.5 multiplier to your water moves, and that might come into play here. That's why I stayed at lower health. Yep, I'm actually, uh, so yeah, Mudkip's ability is Torrent. When you're at or under one third health, your water moves deal 50% more damage, and we will be intentionally setting up, uh, that up throughout the run. But uh, in this fight, you just kinda gotta take what you get. Um, yeah. But I'm at a pretty specific health where I'm gonna do an interesting strat here. We'll actually lead with uh, Growl. And ideally, we will get Rock Tomb on turn one, though it's most likely to harden. Ooh, okay. So now, Rock Throw into Torrent. Nah, uh, plus. I uh, can just get a straight up two shot on this nose pass. Uh, you can get double Torrent. Or you can crit on this turn and it still works. Okay, 
that's exactly torrent. Exactly there. <laughs> oh. I can't kill from there without the uh, double torrent. Roxanne has access to two potions. Yeah, these potions are the reason that it saves so much time to just critical on turn two. Yep, mm -hmm. skip all this if you can. And one more attack from her. Don't do it. Okay. Good. Good. <laughs> very, really nice. very slow to get crit on that turn and die. Yeah. It's really nice to finish this fight in Torrent also. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, Torrent saves a lot of time for the next section as well. Okay. Not bad. Um, probably time for a donation or two. Sure thing, I have a donation here from Azurolu, who says, good luck to my best friend Gunner, and shout outs to the couches. That was for $5. <laughs> Thanks, Azu. I have a donation here from GG Bombs for $50, donating $50 for Pokemon 50. Dig with dig, dig with dig, dig with dig. Trio, trio, trio. <laughs> Okay, so now we're entering the next route. Uh, we're actually not going to repel yet because we need to kill one encounter for experience. Okay, that was fast. <laughs> and because we are in Torrent, this will uh, die every time. It's actually an unfavorable range without Torrent. Oh, okay. nice. Nice. Oh, that actually never happened. <laughs> Um, my repel isn't going to last anyway, so uh, had to just go there. Okay. Ooh. Nice one. Okay. Nice. Oh my god. One in 64 for that to happen. <laughs> um, okay, so that was another way to dodge a different type of spinner that can only look up and down. Um, in this case, I actually used a bag manip where I open my uh, inventory or my start menu and then actually go into the bag, and that resets her. Um, her spin timer, so I can always pass her. Um, on the way back, I won't have to actually enter my bag to use the repel, so I'll do a different kind where I just open the start menu, and if she hasn't spun by the time that I open the start menu, assuming I do it within like a couple of frames, then uh, she can't spin by the, by the uh, time I pass either. So There's a lot of different ways to dodge spinners in this game, and once we get the bike, that will also change the game of dodging spinners, but... Um, Every spinner can be dodged in some way, so they're just uh, optional trainers with extra steps. The spinner mechanics kind of make this game really cool to run because the movement for them gets kind of ridiculous. You'll see that later with the bike, especially. And when Gunner paused for that girl, she spun up twice, and mm -hmm. it's only a one in eight chance for that to happen, so that's where the one in 64 came from. Yep, so I had to re remake her look down and then set it up again. Um, which normally, normally doesn't happen, but we got it twice, of course. Mm -hmm. So this Puccina is another example of why Torrent is good. If you're not in Torrent, it never dies, and if you are in Torrent, it always dies. So Torrent is really strong. And it also makes me uh, not have to heal for this fight, because it yes. just uh, can't miss Water Gun. Water Gun is our saving grace. The sweet, sweet 100% accuracy yeah. <laughs> is uh, reassuring in this dark, dark game. <laughs> It wouldn't be a Sapphire run without an absolutely devastating 5% miss. Um, okay, so going to set up the spinner the same way we did the other way. Make her look down. Walk. Uh, Ooh, okay. okay. Ooh. <laughs> Don't actually miss the pause button entirely. Go have a chance to get hit and then question life decisions. <laughs> I think she is a shroomish, so that face is actually really scary if you do hit her. Yeah, that was, uh, that was not <laughs> good, but that's okay. All's well that ends well. It was faster. Right? Save time. But way scarier. <laughs> um, okay, so this fight, um, I've actually taken this fight as opposed to a different optional trainer up top because uh, that trainer has a Machop that can kill if it crits with low kick, which it's only one in three to use, but we're way too scared of that, so... Just gonna fight the guy that has three Pokemon instead. Slightly slower, but way safer. 
And as you can see, I have just barely, including the wild encounter that I killed, gotten level 16 here, which is where Mudkip evolves, right before Brawly's gem. And oh goodness, do you need March Stomp for that fight. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's why we fought so many optionals. It's mostly because of that. There's a lot of other benefits to getting the extra experience, but uh, March Stomp for Brawly is absolutely necessary. It's, I mean, the fight is hard enough. It's like 23% to lose or something, even with March Stomps. Mm -hmm. We also get our favorite move here. Yep, and, and he comes with Mud Shot. Yeah. Awesome move, 5% chance to miss. Like every other move. Yep. And we use that move a lot, so we'll definitely see you uh, last should miss style. at some point. Three encounters in this race. Yeah, getting, th nice. getting three encounters here is something I think that's happened to me like actually once ever. <laughs> um, we did get like actually a first tile encounter and actually a last tile encounter for it to happen, <laughs> but that's okay. No harm, no foul. Not dead. That's what's important. Yeah. Um, little cutscene here. Time for a donation or two. All right, do you have time for an epic donation? Oh, absolutely. From Naima for $25 that says, I want to be the very best, like cancer never was. Oh, goodness. Wally is our real test. No more cancer is our cause. No, no, no. We will journey across the land and through the week's long stream. Dun, 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 dun. Arm in arm, win the fight. A future cancer free Pokemon. <laughs> Thank you, Naima, for that $25 donation. Epic indeed. Writing your own song for a donation. We have time for more? Um, one more. All right, I have a $500 donation here from John G that just says, let's go, Mudkip. <laughs> uh, so we're going to take our first shop here, first of so many shops. Yeah. Second. Um, oh, yeah, right, you're right, second shop. First real shop. Um, so uh, I'm actually selling Great Balls and the TM because, like I said, this game is super brutal, so we need to buy lots of healing items, so many healing items, in fact. Um, We'll also pick up some X items for the coming fights. Um, this will not be the first time that I actually sell excess items, which is something you like don't see in Pokemon speedruns that often, at least not to this degree. Um, but you need a lot of money to like, and it's not even just being safe. Like you actually need the healing items to to win the fights a lot of the time. Yeah. Something okay. else. You pass those twins. Double fights are optional in Sapphire, uh, not in Emerald, but uh, in later gens. But Sapphire, they're optional entirely, so you just run right past them. This is going to be another bag, Manep. Wait for him to turn, open the bag, reset his spend timer, run past him. Can't see you if you do that. Uh, and it is better than... Because you can. he actually can't look down, so you can go through the grass to dodge him, but uh, it's slower on average to do that because of the likelihood that you get an encounter. It's kind of annoying a lot of the spinners that look like up and down or left and right. Uh, if you go in the grass, you can avoid them, but then you risk encounters. So. And our, our money is super tight. I actually picked up a rappel off the ground in the previous route uh, mm -hmm. just to save $350. Yeah. Uh, so it's not worth repelling just for that when you can just waste a little bit of extra time to get past him. Mm -hmm. I'm just happy to see you saw rock, Tim. <laughs> Good old days. <laughs> did used to use that. 95%. We do obviously have to repel for this place. Uh, so many encounter chances here. Uh, and we are going to do this cape without flash, which is actually a lot easier than it looks. <laughs> Let's see if we can get a bonk list, though. Intentional bonk. <laughs> It's faster to do that than turning again. Yep. Uh, and this is an interesting little thing. You might wonder why I do this, walk around <laughs> Steven. Uh, well, I can run, and he can only walk. And he actually has to leave this room after the cutscene, so he would have to walk all the way around me, and uh, it's faster for me to take the extra steps than him to, since I can run. Um, probably a donation or two. 
Sure thing. I have a donation here from $39 from Scout Kid donating $39 for Best Boy Jigglypuff. Sleep aid and pillow in one adorable package. What's not to love? Back air. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are you talking from personal experience, or...? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have a donation here for $303 from Saturn New Aki. Oh. Here's $303 for the cutest Gen 3 Pokémon, Mawile. Let's keep the Pokémon train going. Okay, so this fight is really annoying, but we got the best possible Good. move. <laughs> uh, he has Detect, which can burn our Mud Shot PP and waste tons of time, but fight on turn one is the best thing that can happen, so I guess that makes up for the... Well, some of the extra two encounters that we got before. And now it is time for Brawly. This fight is... If you just don't miss Mudshot, it's generally fine. But um, the major problem with this fight is that Brawly likes to set up uh, Bulk Up, which increases defense, and we're using a physical move, Mudshot. Um, which doesn't sound so bad, but he also heals if you hit him to a... like, under a specific health. And if he gets to heal to full with a Bulk Up setup, you generally lose, so... Uh, we're going to lead off here with an X attack and hope he doesn't bulk up uh, because that makes things infinitely more complicated. Okay, that is what you expect. So now I have to pay very close attention to exactly how much damage I do. Um, oh, oh, and oh okay. God. That is very, very bad. Okay. Uh, that's actually a loss. Yeah. <laughs> To give you an idea, we used to um, just like fourth, I think. That's oh. weird. I'll have to let the SP load up here. So in Emerald, I actually do the Brawly fight a lot later, but yeah. in Sapphire, it's actually just needed to get this experience here, so we can mm -hmm. do that. But yeah, so I was actually 100% to lose there from that point because I would have had to heal since I was dead to Karate Chop, then he would have Karate Chop, that would have done more than half my health, and then I have no more Super Potions, so I actually had to reset there. It was pretty much crit or die at that point, and Spacer's reset. Bulk up again. He does prefer bulk up on turn one, so you are prepared for this. Okay. Bulk up again, so that's a mud shot from there. Okay. Don't crit me. Seismic toss is great. Okay. Don't miss. miss. Okay. Good. So, <laughs> one down. Um, you have to choose whether you use Mudshot or Water Gun on turn two, so I'm like looking at exactly how much damage I've done because it's super close. Um, hopefully, we don't hit this into heal range. That is not heal range. Not arm thrust. Good. Okay. Just don't miss. Just don't miss the game. Good. Good. Okay. Nice. That's about it. <laughs> Karate Chop's a high critical move, that's why it was scary. Yes. Other than that. Um, as far as uh, Brawly fights go, I mean, the first death was pretty fast, so... Could have been worse. Yeah. Only one death up to this point is not bad at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a much worse practice run than this. <laughs> yep. But yeah, ripped the deathless stream, but uh, like I said, was not counting on it. I uh, have a little boat cutscene coming up here, so you can read a few donations. All right, I have a donation here for $155 from Empire Ship, who says, greetings from the front row. Here's $155 for Cyndaquil. I wanted to donate during one of my favorite Pokemon games to support a cause now very personal to me. My boyfriend's younger brother is in the hospital right now fighting leukemia for the second time. I would love it if the crowd would join me in saying, we love you, Patrick. One, two, three. We, we love, love you, you Patrick. Patrick. That was beautiful. <laughs> okay, so uh, picking up a revive and the soft sand from the speech. The revive is for added safety. I can basically get one death for free, so I don't have to play so, so scared for the entire game. Um, around even the most unlikely scenarios. And uh, the soft sand is a super important item. It is a held item that increases the power of ground moves by 10%, and we will be using a lot of Mudshot. Um, and for one of the more infamous fights in this game, uh, Rival 2, it is mandatory to make that fight consistent, so. 
and Mudshot starts getting a lot of the multipliers because you get stab and the soft sand at this point, so it's pretty powerful. Yeah, pretty convenient to get it right before arrival too. Yeah. Yeah, you would have to get even more XP if uh, if, it, if there was no soft sand. Yeah, but like another level or something. Um, so these fights can be slightly scary. Uh, Mudshot miss into get a bad move, uh, <laughs> being the real concern here. Yeah. But again, it's only 5%. Good start. Uh, the second fight is scarier. The second fight is this plus a Zubat lead that also knows Supersonic, and I can't actually heal to full health uh, right now because um, I'll actually be manipulating the moves that the AI use based on what health I am. So there will be a lot of places where I can't be too low health because then I'll die, and I can't be too high health because I'll get a bad move um, if I am. So hopefully no Supersonic. Oh. Um, I won't even die if I crit. Okay. It's fine. It's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I only find that to be a little unreasonable, but... Okay. Good. Okay. okay. Nice. Take that. Super scary. Wow. It, like, never happens. Three moves, 50% to miss supersonic, etc. But uh, now we're safe from... Even the worst of scenarios. Yeah. Bell's pretty good too, at least. Didn't have the heal too high. Yep. Uh, so now my HP is actually really good for the next fight. Uh, I need to be under 41 health for the next fight, or the Rival 2 lead can use Growl, and that is, uh, you just lose <laughs> if you yeah. get Growl. So. <laughs> um, probably time for a donation or two. I have a donation or 20. I have one here from Sugar Meowth for $151. Shout out to the Poke Friends crew watching right now. Looking forward to the great run of this untitled Zangoose game. Can I get a honk for any Sneasels watching? That's a good honk. I have a $118 donation here from Gamerfresh. He says, just filling out the Pokedex. Goldine, 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 Goldine. I have a $20 donation here from Fee Becker, who says, here's $20 for my favorite Pokemon, Bulbasaur, 20 times. Love me some Pokemon <laughs> runs. Have a great run, Gunner Maniac. Thank you. This play coming up is also the main reason why we picked May as our character. Gunner can go more in depth on that. Yes. Uh, it's all about the order that the Pokemon are sent out in. Mm -hmm. One more spinner to dodge here. Three times already. <laughs> I was at a one and eight. Like, what, what is happening? <laughs> it's one and eight for him to do that. Um, but that is a consistent uh, way to pass them. Same as the other uh, last on the one of the previous routes. So uh, if you were to pick Brendan, this fight is the same except for the order that the Pokemon come out in. So he would lead Whalmer instead of Numal. Uh, Whalmer knows Splash and Water Gun, so you, it, it can actually be better, but it's way less consistent because Water Gun does a lot more damage than Numel's Tackle. Mm -hmm. um, and I need to set up items without being too low or too high HP, so the consistent damage is what you want from this fight. So this fight is actually really, really cool. Um, the, the major problem with this fight is that the second Pokemon is Grovile, and Grovile has four times super effective Absorb, which heals a ton. Uh, and you can only do about half damage to him. So I've set up exactly 2x attacks and 1x speed here. And that's actually going to make Grovile faster than me on the first turn. And that's super important because he's already full health when he's attacked, so he doesn't get the heal. Okay. Don't miss. No. Nice. Uh, I don't think that's quite a tackle. So now uh, Mudshot lowers speed. We're faster. Nice. Good. Okay. And we win. <laughs> I'm left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Almost. Um, but yeah, it's super. I, I love that strat because you use the fact that Mudshot always lowers speed to be slower on the first turn and faster on the second turn to win. Yeah, Marshall is four times weak against Grasso. Does a lot of damage. Does about, uh, I think, 34 to 40. Yeah. So, 
crit. Oh yeah, and crit also instantly kills. Yeah. So scary also, fight. Also has quick attack, which if you get too low from the absorb, you have to kind of heal around, but he'll always use it at certain health. So you can at least predict it. Okay, another different type of spinner here. I actually have to bag manip this one, but I'm gonna make him look right first. So many walking tiles. <laughs> Get around him, that's the best way to do it. Yeah. Or almost the best way. The easiest way. So now it is time for a short detour for Rock Smash, which you do need to speed the game. And then, as most Pokemon speedruns do, we're going to pick up the bike as soon as we gain access to it. But uh, this bike is a little different than the other bike. <laughs> it's called the Mach Bike, and it is extremely difficult to control. I mean, I've put crazy practice into mastering this monster of a bike. So uh, we'll see if we can get some, some good bike sections this round. It's, it's a lot of fun, but it's also very hard and scary because of how punishing it is to mess up some of the movement. Yeah. It's definitely the most satisfying bike of all the gens when you hit movement with it. This quick menu here, gonna revive our Wingle so we have access to our other revive uh, using e <laughs> Ether on one of that. Yeah, you're right, it wouldn't have worked. Um, teach Rock Smash to our main Pokemon, which might look weird, but uh, saves us catching a different Pokemon for Rock Smash, and we can actually spare the move slot. And both reg register and get on the bike. No! <laughs> <laughs> Messed up the first thing, perfect. Again, it's very hard to control. You get, you just go so fast with it. And you can turn so quickly, too. Yeah, there's there's a lot of tricky sections we'll see this run. Uh, mm -hmm. Much trickier than the one I just messed up, but that's okay. A mock bike uh, at full speed travels with four frames per tell. Yeah. So this bike might not look bad, but if you miss, <laughs> <laughs> the Ralts knows double team, and then you miss again, and then you find yourself with no uh, mud shots remaining. But that has never happened to me, but it does seem reasonably possible. Mm -hmm. So the mock bike also takes some time to accelerate, and running does not. So he's actually going to do something interesting here and get off the bike and then run into the gym, because that's faster, because you don't have to wait for the bike to accelerate. It starts out really slow for about four tiles, I think, and then it gets to full speed. Our friend Meditite, we got a perfect Meditite last time, so surely this one won't go so well. Uh, and this one is actually more important because you're more worried about your Mudshot PP at this point, so if he uses the tactic, it, uh, it can become bad. Okay, don't do it. Oh, oh my goodness. Please. Oh my god. Personally, find that. Wow. Hey? Uh, okay, that's uh, really bad. Yeah. Bide? Dude. Oh my god. That? I mean. Oh my god. Oh man. Don't Please bide. Wow. Wow. That's okay. Have the revive. That's what it's for. Yeah. I actually cannot believe my eyes, though. <laughs> yeah. He has only one in four to confusion, by the way, and if he didn't do it on any turn, it would have been fine. Just scary losing the revive this early because there's so many more fights oh, that you could use them. That's, that's, I mean, I just have to split and, yeah. and hopefully deal with it. Wow, that is crazy. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> in a situation that I'm not used to, I've lost half the XP from this Meditite. I don't know that it matters. It's 184 it if we need it later. I don't think it matters. It shouldn't. Definitely not. Okay, so now I actually have to save for this fight because I don't have my revive anymore. <laughs> have to. I'm very, very used to having the revive actually, but it's okay. <laughs> not well. We actually did die, but not actually dead. Yeah. Now the wave. Waping is what matters. Yeah. Dying. So uh, all three of these Voltorbs are actually faster than me. So uh, I'm gonna use an X speed here. Hopefully, don't get Sonic Boom. <laughs> Of course. Okay. It's one in four to get Sonic Boom too, uh, and it can miss. I may. I'm so low on healing items now, but I should still be okay. Dead to a miss into Sonic Boom, which is why I had to save just in case. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Stomp Queen just does 20 damage, and it's a lot of damage early on in the run like this, so very annoying move. Okay. So now I have to use my very last potion and save for Watson. <laughs> Usually it goes fine. Let me just don't miss. My shot and the fight is fine. Yeah, he, his team is pretty weak to much. He's got two four times weaknesses. So Magneton just gets destroyed by it. Any ground type is pretty nice because it cannot use any electrical moves on you. Yeah, that's the other side of it. Yeah. Yep, so just don't miss. If you, if, you, <laughs> if you miss Voltorb, he has self-destruct also. Yeah. He really doesn't like to use it, but it has happened to me. Um, I believe Voltorb and Magneton are faster than you, so you have to set up an X speed here. Emptiest inventory I have ever seen. Oh, oh. nice. Oh, nice. Good. Nice. There's one miss. Nice. That's actually really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was worried about what my HP was at for the coming fights, and uh, this works out pretty well. And I get to keep my full heal, which is why I didn't I just heal, because you might have noticed uh, I, I have a full heal, and I didn't heal the confusion on the meta type fight once I got confusion from confused. Uh, con Confused from confused. And uh, <laughs> it's because I, I really do need to hold on to that full heal for later fights. But good Watson fight. Yeah, that was really good. It's nice seeing Supersonic miss. It's like 50% accurate, and it's, all of them have hit so far except that one. Confusion has a 10% chance to confuse, and then hurting yourself <laughs> in confusion is 50% twice. And getting confusion every single turn is one in four each turn, but you know. <laughs> Marathon luck. <laughs> that was that was actually crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen anyone die to that fight. Uh, yeah, me neither. So uh, this is our first real mock box, uh, bike section, so I'll let the couch take over for this one. All right. So one thing he just did is he turned and then got on the bike, and that actually cancels out part of the turn frame, saves a little bit. Did not get the rock smash encounter there. That spinner cannot see you because he came from below, and if you come from below, the spinner does not have time to turn. Same for this one, and then gets off the bike and into run to right. That, nice. That one's so that hard. Was, that was really good. <laughs> Ghost knows he bonked to use the repel. It's way faster to bonk into a wall to pause, which you'll see a few times. Here, yeah. here he's going to go down to deload the spinner and then go back up, and he doesn't have time to spin after you deload him, and then he's going to stay for the hardest fight in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Almost the hardest, top three. One of the hardest, yes. Um, that was a really good bike section. That run into bike, which uh, we'll explain again when it happens uh, later, is just another way to dodge a spinner, force him to run, get on the bike within a few frames, just go ahead and pass, and that's a uh, guaranteed pass. And you just cannot buffer. So cool. Yeah, you can also not buffer going on the bike, so it's actually a pretty difficult trick. Mm -hmm. Okay, this fight is the absolute worst. And you can't go into this fight at full HP because uh, the wing goal has Growl, which is instantly dead. This Rosalia is 77% to die to a move that has a 95% chance to hit, and if it doesn't die, the run's over. Nice. Nice. <laughs> okay. And that's why we saved. But run's over in like standard <laughs> attempts he saved, of course. Of course. Um, but yeah, this is probably the most frustrating fight for world record attempts yeah. because you, yeah. you get to this fight uh, after a long, hard day of resetting, and you just die to missing the range. And it's like, why, why did I even come here? But. So you see I just bonk into the wall there rather than letting the mock bike decelerate. Um, it's a lot faster. Oh, uh, I'll, do, I'll do a decelerate here so you can, oh, nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see how slow, uh, slow it is, but uh, yeah, have to pick up this nugget for money. Nice. Wow, those bonks are so loud. <laughs> it's kind of nice. He has one item left and now he gets the shot. It's kind of cool how that worked out. Yeah, just my one full heal. <laughs> one full heal made it here. Shockwave. Don't sell shockwave. Yeah. No Need matter what. <laughs> we did it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Cursor wanted to. <laughs> so, big shop here. Lots of items. So many items. 12 super repels. 10 X specials. It's also the only shop that sells X specials. Yeah. Yep. Comes at a great time as well, right before the fire gym. One X spend, one X speed, and two guard specs, leaving us with $140. So much money you spend there, but you do need pretty much every item you bought. Mm -hmm. So this is a really tricky mock bike section where I'm going to try to set up a crazy repel 
Um, but you have to have, be pretty much perfect to get it, so we'll see how it goes. And we'll have another run into bike here as well. Oh, that's okay. It doesn't count. No, it counts with those. Yeah, it's over. Yeah. That's okay. Nice. Okay, not bad. The rappel's dead, but still not a bad section. Um, so I wanted to line up the rappel to wear out uh, so that it would act as an instant deceleration for the bike rather than having to bonk into the wall or letting it decelerate. And it also would wear out on a tile where I could just go ahead and open my menu and set up the next rappel. But now I'll have to take uh, two extra steps, which will probably give the trainer time to spin before I open the bag, but that's okay. Not dead. That's something we've started doing a lot in Pokemon speedruns is we time our rappels now a lot more, like, exactly, so they run that right in front of trainers. It's pretty cool. It's moving super hard. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so normally the rappel would have worn off on that tile and he wouldn't have had to decelerate like that. Okay, so I took those extra steps there for the same reason uh, that we were talking about with the last rappel. You'll see this one pretty obviously, but uh, it's just to make the rappel wear out on a specific tile. I have to open my bag anyway on that tile, and I have to stop on that tile to uh, make sure that I don't hit the spinner. So uh, those tiles just work out perfectly. And that was another run into bike on the last, which we actually dodged a different way earlier, but now that we have the bike, it's faster to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, flying right in the center, <laughs> just kidding. You just gotta believe in it. <laughs> yeah, it's just so scary. Like At first it is scary, but once you once you know the number of tiles. Mm -hmm. Strength, pretty important move here, uh, not only because it's an HM, but also um, a nice physical move that is important in the upcoming fights. Yeah. And has 100% accuracy. 100%. This is another rappel that's been set up nicely. After this one, whereas that'll just have to take one step down to nice. <laughs> <laughs> Not slower, but makes this movement way more weird. I've never seen someone smash that rock before. <laughs> Didn't even lose time. Yeah. Some more spinner passes coming up, going down here to dodge the first one, and getting off for the run to bike, nice. and then getting off here for the decreased load time for the map transition. Yep. <laughs> Move, it's so cool. I, I love Gen 3 movement. <laughs> yeah, that part, this whole, I would say, uh, you know, split in the run is probably the hardest overall. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes a lot of practice. That last little section there, I've, I'm, you know, hours and hours and hours on that one. <laughs> yeah. um, but right at the end, you saw me get off the bike by bonking into the wall, which Araya mentioned. Okay. <laughs> bike first, then talk. Uh, Arai mentioned reduces audio lag. If you load a new audio track right before you go through a map transition, it reduces the amount of lag for that transition. So just a small thing. Uh, these fights are pretty much free, so we can read a couple of donations here. Sure thing. Well, I just wanted to remind everybody that after this run, we have bonus game two coming up, but only if you guys meet the incentive. So we are currently at $51,000 out of $75,000. It's really impressive. You guys managed to donate $26,000 in a little under an hour. We just need another $24,000 in order for you to see the two players one controller blindfolded Mike Tyson's punch out. So speaking of which, I have a donation here from Smotty for $5. He says, did I just hear a $5 donation train for Mike Tyson's punch out? I mean, I think you did. Let's hear the train. Choo choo. I have a $25 donation here from Fango. Oh, dang, those Evolution crochets are cute as heck. And that hat and that poster, take my money. Super excited about that Tyson run. Let's get that met. OK, so here we're going to switch Wingle to the front and save. I personally hate this fight. It's the worst. Um, yeah. But it does feature a pretty cool strat where we are going to lead with Wingle to tank the Intimidate from Mydiana, which cuts attack by one, uh, as well as use the turn that Wingle has to set up a guard spec to avoid sand attacks, which is actually the move we want to see because we're, we're guard specking. Um, and then we're going to set up a little bit, and then we're going to test the water, see how much damage we do, see what health we're at, and then make a split decision from there. 
I was like, why do we have 21 health? <laughs> Split XP with the Meditite. Yeah. What if he tanks the fight now? No way. <laughs> it, it does more damage <laughs> than the, <laughs> the Marsh stomp. <laughs> okay, he tanked the crit. My man. <laughs> this poor Wingull. He was intimidated by that level 6 Wingull. <laughs> okay, open up. Next attack. Want to see sand attack every single time. That's not good, but it's okay. Still likely to sand attack from here, or 50 50 to sand attack from here. Okay, good. good. Now we're gonna see how this turn goes. Good damage good. and sand attack, so we're just gonna attack in. I uh, needed both of those actually to attack him. Uh, I would have had to set up another X attack if I got a bad roll there, or he hit me. And um, that forces me to tackle this Golbat instead of strengthening it because I'll push it into heal range if I don't, but now I can just strength. No supersonic. Okay, that's fine. Um, this is the reason why I wanted to keep this full heal, specifically for this fight, because there's just not really anything you can do if you don't have an item to, to heal off the, the supersonic there. Something else kind of annoying is attack boosts determine how much damage you do to yourself in confusion. He's got three of them, so he do like 20 plus to himself in confusion. This does die to Mudshot, which avoids the rough skin text because Mudshot doesn't make contact, but if you miss, you die, so. <laughs> yeah. Overall, not bad. Not dead. If you get crit by that Golbat on the last turn, oh man, it's so it's much so sad. So much time lost. But he could have just missed Supersonic and everything would have been fine, so all square. <laughs> nice. Scary stairs. Now for scary ledges. <laughs> oh. Close. Yeah. That spinner cannot look great, so. Yeah. Bike kind of has a mind of its own sometimes when you're going off ledges, so. Good yeah, luck. there's like a little delay before you start moving. It's, it's just so weird. It's no good. A uh, little gym puzzle here. You know, same every time, but it's still kind of scary. <laughs> uh, there's, some of these holes have trainers in them, so if you, if you hit the wrong one, then it can be really bad. But just let muscle memory take over. Uh, so this fight might look a little weird depending on <laughs> depending on how it actually goes. Um, but I promise everything will make sense. Just believe in me. So first, have to heal to Hulk for the swing. 62 might cut it, but probably better to just go to full. Still have an extra super, so that's okay. Switch Wingle out of the front, and of course, save. <laughs> Okay, so we have to set up quite a lot of items here. Uh, four X attacks to be exact. You can get by on three, but then the Torkoal becomes the same range as that really scary Resilia we talked about before, so not worth it. Unless you absolutely have to. Yeah, Torkoal comes with like a track and body slam, which are not moves you want to be hit by. Be a bit strange that he's uh, throwing a Pokeball to trainer here, but uh, we we do need Smog to hit this a few more times. <laughs> Stop it, thief! <laughs> <laughs> I find oh. your battle style to be intriguing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now she has to use Smog because Light Screen and Sunny Day are up. You guys like 40 percent? Wow, that is <laughs> so many smogs. Come on. This time for sure. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh my 
please. Oh my god, please. Okay. Uh, so we heal first. Oh, it's my last turn. It doesn't matter. Come on. <laughs> that was three misses in a row. This is the last chance, actually, unless... Okay, now I'll uh, give one more. Oh. She'll heal on this turn, and then, yeah, so that's actually over. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> oh, man. That was so many small hits. It's 40%. <laughs> Three misses in a row, which is like 10% a miss, and you can't hit the 40%. Okay. This time, we'll truly be better. I almost feel bad for not explaining why I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah. So we've come too far now. You promise, we'll tell you in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Two. Yeah. That's four misses in a row. My record is seven. Three. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Yes. There we go. Okay, finally. Couldn't have just done that the first. <laughs> Man, why do we want to be poisoned? That's crazy. scary on the Torkoal. Uh, if I miss my shot, it can kill. Good. Okay. 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 Absolutely horrible first fight, the worst <laughs> possible, and then pretty much perfect second fight. So. Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> Not horrible. So, now, <laughs> to put it all together, <laughs> why on earth did we do that? <laughs> uh, first, we have to take a little detour. We're going to take the medicine shop because it's the only place that gives us uh, the equivalent of hyper potions at this point in the run. And uh, it's also cheaper, and our money's pretty tight overall, so. Did use every super potion we, or actually no, I, that was on the first reset, so I do have one super left. So nice here. These items are pretty cheap compared to their alternative. You save like 400 on the hypers and a couple hundred on the energy powders and stuff like that. And it is pretty necessary. Yeah, money's so tight in this run. The uh, uh, only thing is that those items uh, reduce your friendship with mm -hmm. your Pokemon, but yeah, that doesn't matter for the speed run at all. Yeah, you have happiness. Wait for her to turn. Super Apollo. And as you can see, I have not healed off this poison, which makes sense because I wanted it so badly, right? Yeah. Pick up the rare candy, and now, in addition to Wingle dying because we used him first, we die to poison out in the desert, and we are at the next gym. Oh, how convenient. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, the poison doesn't go quite that badly, but that is still faster than the alternative, so. Mm -hmm. That's also why he couldn't use any centers in the entire run. He needed to make sure that this was the last center he entered. Yep, and last, yeah, the last center you enter is the one you spawn at. Yeah. So. All right, I hate this Delicati <laughs> so much. Don't miss this much shot, not this one. Okay. It's very important that she's not faster than you on the first turn. She can just lock you with attract and sing. Yeah. The way this gym works is that room you choose basically decides nice. which nice. item they will use, which X item. Uh, and the other room has X speed, so that's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Some of these Pokemon are ridiculous. These fights are so stupid. Yeah, the other room has X speed, which means that she gets a better chance to sing lock you, but the sing is less accurate. 
so it's just better to take the the x-accuracy side on average. Uh, this fight, the other side is a Lanoon that uh, they use guard spec on, so your mud shot won't ever lower speed, and the move he's using is headbutt, which has a 30% chance to flinch, and he outspeeds you if you don't drop a speed, so even though it takes an extra turn to kill through x-defend, it's worth it to use this side. Actually, very nice that I'm full HP here, too, because normally I have to be afraid of a crit. Nice, oh. great critical. <laughs> I have to be afraid of a crit if I don't have my revive, which I don't, but, uh, nice. Crits ignore stat changes, so that X defend was not calculated into that, so save the turn. Yeah, they they ignore any stat changes that would hurt the damage of the critical. Um, but if you were to, example, use uh, Meditate to increase your attack, and then crit, it would include the attack yeah. bonus. So from, like, the other gener- well, earlier generations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really nice in this game because you set up a lot. It's also scary sometimes, and specifically it's on Norman, uh, <laughs> because that is the one fight that we'll use an X defend on in this game. Mm -hmm. And the reason that fight sucks so much is because if he crits, the X defend isn't counted, and then you just die. Yeah. So dead. <laughs> uh, this fight is about 30% to kill you, so. Not the, the, the Norman fight. Really good gym so far. Yeah, really good. This this gym it can actually troll you super hard. So mm -hmm. other save here because again very scary fight. This is top three. Mm -hmm. This is pretty much tied with Cool Trainer Brook, but the the king of hard fights in this game and pretty much any Pokemon speedrun is Tate and Liza, which is the, the double battle in this game. Not only is it the most likely fight to kill you, it is also by far the hardest fight to play correctly. Yeah. The, the notes for that fight, uh, in, in the Sapphire notes, it says X speed and adapt. <laughs> yeah, it's it's such a cool fight when you're, like, very into the game. Wait, why did I much That was interesting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I should have X attacked first. Uh, actually, X attacked first, because he's loafing on this turn, and now he can use faint attack when I heal. Sometimes the AI plays weird. Okay. Oh, this is gonna be weird now. Strength, strength. I think that's gonna be close. Yeah. Don't heal range me, bro. Uh, maybe should have much shot it. That's okay. Just gonna heal. Yeah. But it's fine. Not actually in danger. Or any more danger than normal. Mm -hmm. Yon's a bit annoying because he can get put to sleep here and I'll have to heal that off, but not too bad so far. Got lots of heal powders for this. Yeah. Good. Yeah, those are really high rolls too. Yeah. Good. Okay. First one down. And this is why we kind of need hypers for this fight, because if you if you aren't healing to full HP when you heal, it's really bad. Mm -hmm. um, this guy is actually faster than me to start out with, so I have to open with energy powder. One shot. Now he's slower than me because of the mud shot. I'm not going on 45. <laughs> yeah. Even though I really want to. Heal again. I think that'd be a range for the next lacking to come in and kill. much better HP. I'm actually still out of range to die to focus punch, but I would have to miss much shot and he would have to high roll, so. Mm -hmm. But we do want to see focus punch because. Oh, oh unbelievable. Gosh. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That is the worst thing that can ever happen. <laughs> the thing that's annoying about this fight is you just give him so many turns that the, the one in 16 becomes more likely. It's quite rough. Yeah. That's pretty much the slowest death that can happen on the run. But surely this one will go better. Yeah. But yeah, that's why you want to see focus punch. Because if you focus punch, if he focus punches, then he just doesn't do damage that turn. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to sweat the crit. Norman's team is just kind of crazy. Slacking is just such a powerhouse Pokemon. 
Yeah, it's, I, and we have to X defend here because I would be like heal looped if I didn't, right? So this mm -hmm. turns it from a two shot into a three shot. So I get two, two turns in and then I heal. It's also kind of nice when he uses Yawn because he kind of just wastes a turn because you can just heal it off, but it takes him two. Yeah, the, the best case scenario is actually he, uh, he yawns and then yawns again mm -hmm. uh, instantly while you're still asleep. Do it. Okay. Definitely not going to the next one at 23. <laughs> not as long as you have your friend the energy root. <laughs> yeah. Okay, 66. Almost guaranteed to tank focus punch. This flash is one of those scary moves that, again, high crit rates. It's 1 in 8 instead of 1 in 16. It's always scary. But it's good. Just thank you. <laughs> now, this is also a damage range to 3 shot. Yeah. That was pretty good rolls. Should die from here. Yeah. Though it's not guaranteed. Good. Okay. Nice. Second trip. <laughs> okay, uh, it's been a while, but definitely time for some donations now. Wonderful. I have a $9 donation here from Ian Stouffer. $9 for Blastoise, my favorite Pokemon. <laughs> some love for Blastoise in the crowd. I have a $59 donation from Vexed Virus. Had to leave $59 for my favorite ferocious Pokemon pup, Arcanine. And I have a $25 donation here from Big Bad Eric, who says Spike Vegeta is my favorite Pokemon, but I don't know his number. <laughs> it's 1,500 if you want to <laughs> go again later. All right, if you, if you want to donate for Spike Vegeta. <laughs> Real love. Time for more? Yep. Yeah, a couple more. All right, I have a $450 donation here from the two hippos. Greetings from the crowd. Here's $450 for Hippowdon because hippo. <laughs> I have $213 here from Shito. Here, $213 for the best Pokemon ever. Shuckle. <laughs> I have $15 here from Lachlan, who says, am I doing this $5 train right? Another $5 from Log, who says, all aboard the $5 Tyson train. Honk. I mean, choo-choo. I'm hearing, I'm hearing some mixed messages from the crowd. <laughs> I have $380 here from Peripheral. $380 for the best Pokemon Latias. Shoutouts to all the runners for raising money for this wonderful charity and keep on rocking. And I have $5 from Emily who says, so I heard you like Mudkips. <laughs> all right, another little shop there. Uh, more items we need for the rest of the run. Healing items and X items pretty much. Oh, okay. Uh, so this biking section is pretty difficult. Uh, not this one, but the one after the water. Uh, and there's some trainers that are pretty easy to hit if you if you make even the slightest mistake. Um, but as for now, we have set up another beautiful little repel. Come on, man. <laughs> Anytime though. And. Gonna scoop up another rare candy really quick, and uh, you can actually get encounters here even though you have a repel because there are encounters that are higher level than your lead, so a repel doesn't work. And this is the scary part: two run into bikes and a turn really, really fast. Nice. Oh, Ooh, okay. Nice. Okay. okay, that was two good. out of three, and the, the one I missed is super unlikely to hit you because yeah. he can look in any direction. It can be awkward getting back on the bike because uh, the select button is kind of weird. You have to be completely stopped to be able to get on the bike. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a pretty tight window to yeah. be able to do that. <laughs> that yeah. 
But yeah, it's only one and eight for most spinners to get hit, even if you do miss the run into bike. Mm -hmm. But uh, missing two in a row is not great. This guy is a bag minute. Uh, that was really slow, but thankfully he didn't turn. Yeah. Another really tricky section here. If you're off by one tile, like anywhere, you get hit by a trainer. That part's super hard. Yeah. Don't want to hit trainers with grass type Pokemon. That's the name of the game. Yeah, that guy, the, one of those guys is a Breloom, yeah. which is like mega run over. <laughs> right. It's not close, but not bad. Yeah, right in there. No trainers hit. Take that. Yeah, for Mudkip, it's really convenient that in this run you actually see hardly see any grass types. Yeah. It's uh, a few scary ones, but that's it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much just the uh, Ghoul Trainer Brook, in all honesty. Yeah, any Grove Yeah, yeah. Yep, I have one more Grove Isle left in front of us too, but that one is... Uh, we've gained the advantage this time. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'd say time for a few more donations. These fights are pretty simple and free. Cool. I have a donation for $188 here from Only the Harvest, who says, gotta see that punch out incentive. So here's Gengar's Pokedex number times two. Let's make this happen. Only the Harvest raising the bar again. <laughs> I have $10 here from Nico Veo, who says, I'm a simple person. I see evolutions, I give money. Keep up the good work. I have a $10 donation here from Colin B, who says, I'm naking wrist for nation blindfolded. Can't wait for the punch out run. Oh no. Why would you do that? <laughs> Come on. So I couldn't pass there because he was looking the direction I needed to pass because he spun. He got a sneaky spin in right at the last second. Mm -hmm. But um, this fight. I mean, you don't generally die here if you have enough health. Uh, the Mighty Anna just has Swagger, so you can have to burn one of your status healing items a lot of the time. And this was my last Mud Shot, too. So, uh, he, it also dies to Strength, but you get rough skin if you if you Strength. I don't know if you mentioned, we also got Surf, which is like a super strong water move, which is great for us, because we're water tight. Yep, 100% accurate. Yeah, 100% accurate. 100% accurate, and this Mudkip has perfect special attacks. So. Yeah, so nice. Nice bite. Just get to surf twice and win. Yep. The swagger. And that doesn't even die if you're in torrent. Uh, one of the one of the few. Mm -hmm. Yeah, surf also gets the torrent boost, so you can get the 1.5 multiplier for stab, 1.5 for torrent, and it just starts multiplying like crazy. Uh, so we have one more rival fight next. Uh, <laughs> this one is much different than the last one in that it's almost impossible to die. In fact, I've never died to that fight. That was perhaps a cast form. Yep. Our, our good friend Casper. Unfortunately, you can't name him in this game, uh, or we would have had a naming incentive for it. Mm -hmm. Another good thing about the Casper is that it comes with a Mystic Water, and that also boosts the power of Seraph again. Yeah, more multipliers. Which we will be equipping immediately. <laughs> I like to use these rare candies we've been hoarding. Perfect timing because the rival's coming up. This menu and get our Mr. Water, take off the soft sand. Mr. Water. And Rival Flight. So this one's pretty simple. The new mole has magnitude, focus energy, takedown, and some crazy combination of those moves can't actually kill you, <laughs> but um, generally you don't take that much damage. So we can just set up, uh, I believe, the same thing as last time. We had two X attacks and one X speed. That is fine. <laughs> oh, oh, that's oh. what I was, I didn't want to say. You're <laughs> kidding. <laughs> okay. Oh, didn't kill. Slightly scary now. Okay, okay. that won't kill. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> why, do you, why, why do you have to make me sweat it? <laughs> In my head, I was like, maybe like focus energy magnitude 10, and then, you know. 5% to get a magnitude 10, 150 power, uh, base power. It's stronger than Earthquake and Stab and everything, which is scary, but. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Things you see in a, in a GDQ run. Yeah. Oh, we're fine, no big deal. Yep, just strength to win, as long as you don't die to crazy combinations <laughs> of magnitude. I have seen 10, 9, 10, I think, before. Oh my god. <laughs> 
still didn't die. I've never died. Um, I would say probably a good time for a few more donations. Just a pretty simple bike section and a cutscene. Wonderful. I have a $100 donation here from Maricoid, who says, ready to be the very best, like no one ever was. I have a donation here from Al for $150, who says, hello, GDQ. You have no idea how happy I am to see the game that introduced me to Pokemon and video games in general. This donation goes to Blindfolded Punch-Out so we can knock out cancer. Thinking of you, Uncle Randy. And I have a $25 donation here from General Grievous. Who knew that Grievous was so generous? Hopping on the Mike Tyson donation train. Choo-choo! another $25 donation from Charbok who says, what is a Pokemon's favorite coffee shop? Charbox. <laughs> good luck on the run. Those are some good groans from the crowd. I appreciated those. <laughs> I have $150 here from Reed Zor who says, untitled goose game, but it's in the Pokemon universe and you control Psyduck. Psy honk. Okay, these two gym fights are uh, pretty free. Uh, in this marathon, like, safer route, we actually pick up an extra rare candy over the normal route, and uh, there's quite a lot of benefits for doing that. But one of them is that you're faster than the Sto Duo and not just speed tied. Unfortunately, we are just outside of Torrent, where the Swablu would be pretty likely to die, but it's guaranteed to tank non-surf Torrent. So I'm going to be using Strength instead because I need to hold on to my Surfs for the rest of the game, pretty much. Um, and also, uh, Winona is another example of a fight where I don't want to be too low HP and I don't want to be too high HP, so I'm just going to use a normal potion, uh, which is why I bought extra ones, actually. That's annoying. Uh, extra normal potions in the last shop for this fight and a few others. Uh, Winona is a fight that isn't super likely to kill you, but similar to the Norman fight, uh, if you die on the wrong turn, it's super slow because of the amount of setup that goes into this fight. Shows us a lot of Pokemon. Also, I hate this puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> do it three times. I just, the less I think about it, the more it makes sense. <laughs> So, oh, uh, so use a potion, and as always, save. Yeah. Uh, oh, actually, down. no, yeah, down. Because I used all my stacking mm -hmm. potions, so they're down. Got to remember things like that. Yeah. It's not common you use all of them, but sometimes you do. Have I ever used all of them? I don't know. <laughs> the Metatite was uh, to blame for that. Yeah. You took all of my potions, my revive, and my dignity. And your sanity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, this fight. The Swallow loves to spam Double Team, which is everyone's favorite. Uh, but we need to open with an X Special to be able to one-shot with Surf. That is an excellent start. I can't wow. believe my eyes. Oh my goodness. Okay, good. <laughs> we win. Never, <laughs> not really. Uh, there's quite a lot to go. Starting with a heal, because we did get double Aerial Ace, which almost never happens. Over almost always uses protect, so it's a good time to heal. But we are dead, so it won't. Oh, yeah, that's true. 41. Okay, that's actually nice. Oh, and <laughs> I began X attacks. We actually. Oh, no. We'll do that. Need to set up five here. Please use protect. I feel that's unreasonable. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty likely to uh, protect on those turns, so it's pretty unlucky. It's probably because I said something. Aerial Ace 38. <laughs> Need to watch my HP very carefully here. Okay, that's good. Because I need to set up Torrent, but I also need to not die. Protect one more would be nice. Or just a low roll. Okay. Uh, that was fine. Yeah, okay. um, so now we just KO. Protect is fine. We expect that. I still need to set up an X speed, but this pal. Uh, come on! <laughs> I love trainers who just battle this way, like 
Yeah. Protect, protect. Okay, protect. so I need to set up Torrent so that the Skarmory will die, but the Pelipper isn't guaranteed to hurt me, as you can see from those two turns. So I'm gonna set up the X speed. The Skarmory will most likely hit me into Torrent. Okay, okay. and now we win. So that fight's all about balancing your HP. You also kind of have to get a bit deeper into Torrent, too, because he's going to evolve here. Yep. It's not so important to keep Torrent, though it is nice. Yeah. Uh, but having Torrent for that fight is, is mandatory. Okay, so uh, pretty good time for donations, I would say. Well, evolution cutscenes and some biking. You say there's time for some donations? Yeah. All right, well, I have $5 here from Kurai Okami, who says, I'm broke as honk. But here's a small donation for my favorite Pokemon of all time, Absol. I'd also like this donation to go to the Punch-Out Run. I have another $5 from Checo NB who says, nothing personal, Tyson, but you're gonna have to go down. Let's keep the Punch-Out Train going. You guys are doing pretty well on that Punch-Out Train. We're up to $62,000 out of $75,000, but that still means we have over $10,000 to go before you guys get to see that bonus game. Looks like we have uh, about 30 minutes left in this run, would you say? Uh, just about, yeah. Yeah, you guys have 30 minutes to do... Oh, we're getting close to $63,000 now, so we have 30 minutes to do $12,000. I believe in you, GDQ. You can do it. Some uh, fancy bike movement that I did okay <laughs> there. Um, now we just repel, teach fly, and this is the last run into bike in the game, so don't miss me messing it up. <laughs> nice. That was not the cleanest one, but it's still good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that might have looked strange. Uh, I went into Lily Cove for just a second. Uh, just one tile can set up Lily Cove, and that lets me fly back there later. I don't need to go there now, but I do need to go there later. So. It's weird how late into the game you get fly in Sapphire. In most games, you get kind of early. On and off the bike there to load a different audio track to reduce the delay of transitions. About once before, and I'll do it like two or three more times. One's about to happen. Though it's the hardest one. Oh, nice. Ooh, that was sick. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a cool one. <laughs> I invented that one, I think. But yeah, you just, you, because it's like a door entrance there, you can actually just decelerate the mock bike instantly by letting go, and then you get off the bike, mm -hmm. and uh, load a new audio track, go through, get back on the bike. Um, these fights are pretty free, but this is actually another example of why getting the extra candy is important because you get to evolve to Swampert right away after Renona, so that if you miss Mudshot on the Carvanas that are coming up, you don't just die. So that's, that's a nice one. Even this late in the run, still dealing with 95%. Yes. In fact, yeah, even all the way up until the last 95% move in the run, you can still lose the run to missing it. <laughs> Uh, if you get the wrong move combination. And the Carvanas would also die to Surf if I'm in Torrent, uh, which I am, but my Surf count is really important for the rest of the run, so I can't, can't Surf them instead. And Mudshot's faster because they're not very effective text. So one more with more 95% moves, and uh, yeah, don't miss. Because I, I don't, actually don't have my revive, so it is a little tiny bit scary. I'll heal if I miss, though. Overall, pretty good with 95 percenters this run, I would say. As the last 95 percenter for a while comes up. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> still have uh, still have one more fight where we have to mud drop, but mm -hmm. uh, not bad. Probably read a few donations. Donations over there. <laughs> I do. I have a donation from some lovely person named Fred for one thousand five hundred dollars and twelve cents. This says twelve cents for my favorite Pokemon Butterfree and fifteen hundred for my second favorite Pokemon Spike Vegeta. Of course, my favorite too. Of course. <laughs> Challenge met. <laughs> wow. It was beautiful. I feel defeated. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a lot of other wonderful donations here. Taco Jet gave $120, donating to present my favorite Pokemon. But its number isn't enough, so let's multiply it by a Caterpie. So all of you uh, Dex heads out there, let's figure out which Pokemon is their favorite Pokemon. Caterpie's 10. I didn't hear the exact number. All right, so it would have to be 12 then, right? Which one is 12? Butterfree again? Is it Butterfree? It, it is, is Butterfree. Butterfree. It is, but a lot of love for Butterfree. Yeah, it's not I mean, a Gunner Maniac run unless you talk to an NPC twice. <laughs> there it was. <laughs> Pick the worst one, too. That guy talks forever, apparently. <laughs> for more donations? Uh, yep, we're just walking for now. All right, Three Ducks gave us $79 and said, here's $79 for my favorite, Slowpoke. Can't wait for AGDQ. It is AGDQ. <laughs> You're here. <laughs> now it's happening. You don't have to wait. All right, $37 from Fox Eddie. $37 in honor of best Pokemon, Vulpix. Let's beat the Elite Four, Omega Weapon, and most importantly, Cancer. Awesome work, all. We've also officially skipped the Master Ball. <laughs> <laughs> Scary stuff. You'll see why, maybe. <laughs> Hopefully not. Now we're good. We'll be fine. Worst cards ever. Those are all active trainers that have terrible vision for some reason. <laughs> Do not eat their carrots, apparently. Ooh, maybe you should have considered saving for this, actually. He's stabbing my revive, but it'll be okay. Uh, so, yeah, don't miss my shot, basically. Actually, I could have surfed here once to play safe, but that's okay. Still hit. Yeah. Faster. <laughs> More surf people. Okay, perfect. Just, God, don't miss. <laughs> oh, oh, not this one. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> why? Why what does it have to be like that? <laughs> I can't. I can't heal. There is the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I risk locking myself into uh, terrible HP for Titan lives if I heal. Yeah. So. But Hit oh points boy, matters was a lot that scary? Here. Why? Why would you miss the last mud <laughs> shot of the whole run? We said this too. And of course, you focus energy. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. man. So scary. I would have lost a few minutes to that, actually. But now we make our way away from <laughs> what's supposed to be one of the easiest fights in the run <laughs> to the absolute hardest fight in any Pokemon speedrun. This fight is insane. X speed adapt. Yeah, and, and the reason for that is because uh, in this game, Tate and Liza, have, they just have a Soul Rock and a Luna Time. Two Pokemon, it's a double battle. Doesn't sound so bad. Well, it is, <laughs> because uh, the, first of all, the Solrock and the Lunatune are speed tied with one another, so you would never know which one's going to go first, uh, which matters a lot. And secondly, they target completely randomly, so it doesn't matter if they think they can kill something on the field or not, they will target a Pokemon randomly and then choose a move. So, uh, so yeah, it's the worst. Uh, no, don't need to sell. One net ball, which you will see later why we pick up exactly one little net ball. Uh, I also had a repel wear out in the smart, 
uh, as opposed to outside, I set it up that way so that I wouldn't have to re-accelerate the mock bike and just get to step forward instead, since the rappel does stop the bike completely. Pick up the dive HM, teach that immediately for this fight, and because we need to, uh, and we have transitioned to full HMs on our uh, Swampert. See, this kind of convenient. Uh, you only have to catch one Pokemon that you teach HMs to outside of the Swampert. It works out pretty well. It's also menuing uh, specifically on this tile to set up another Repel out for uh, another spinner after this gym. And you saw me use two potions there. Uh, that's another example, and this is by far the most important example, of can't be too high and can't be too low HP. I can't be under 37 because then I risk dying to double Nightshade from this Zatu uh, Drainer bottle because he's faster. And I can't be above an HP at which if Lunatone targets Swampert, it doesn't think that it can kill. I, ne I need, if Lunatone targets my Swampert, which is 50-50, two Pokemon in the field, and uh, then I need it to think that it can kill with Psychic on that turn, because if it doesn't, then it can use Light Screen or Calm Mind, and both of those are super bad. Um, this is another variation of that HP. I'm now at an HP where um, Solrock and Lunatone will both think they can kill Swampert if they target him, which can be good and bad. It all depends on <laughs> 8,000 factors that happen in the fight, but... <laughs> We're gonna navigate it as best we can. It's kind of cruel, but this fight is not only the most likely to kill you, but also the most difficult to play correctly. This fight can make you feel stupid sometimes. Fun gym puzzle, though. I like this one, all, I like this one better than the Emerald one. Yeah. It's fun until you mess up one of the arrows by forgetting it, and then, <laughs> and then you're somewhere you don't know. Yeah, I would be lost, <laughs> because, yeah, I don't know how to do it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Super fun times. Truly. This fight might suck, but it's also kind of fun, too. So we are slower than Solrock and Lunatune, who are once again speed-tied with each other. So first thing is... We're going to X-Speed. And then we're going to adapt. <laughs> we're going to Hyper Potion always on that turn because both of them can target us. So we have to heal for two psychics. Sorok targets Swampert. That's good. Lunatone targets Swampert. That's good. OK, okay interesting spot. Uh, 33, so I have to Hyper again because they can both target him with Psychic again. You can hit, I think, start in battle, and it'll show your exact hit points, which is very useful for calculating Torrent. It was an excellent roll in the Lunatone and a terrible roll in the Soul Rock, which is the exact opposite of what I want. Soul Rock targets Wingle with Psychic. That's really bad. If Lunatone targets Cast Form now, we probably lose. Okay. Uh, 73, so that's Rain Dance Surf. Probably going to get Solar Beam. Okay, just don't kill my cast form, maybe? It's actually fine. Okay, actually, no, this is fine. We just win. Um, because he is charging Solar Beam right now, so he can't heal. Lunatone heals and will kill Solrock and Lunatone, and now um, Surf is going to do double damage to the Lunatone, since Surf only does half damage when you're hitting two targets. So we just win. Perfect. First try to you know. When that fight goes well, you just feel like a genius. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, they gave it to me pretty, uh, pretty easy that yeah. time. Yeah, that but, probably looked way easier than it can be. Mm -hmm. uh, the real problem is, uh, is if you go in with too high HP or you end up at too high HP and you get light screen from Lunatone, you pretty much usually lose. Um, and the Soul Rock also has a Sunny Day, which cuts Water Moves damage. You saw me try to set up a Rain Dance there, but Cast Form died before he could give his best effort. Um, so we're going to make our way to the Aqua Hideout. Remember, we did Repel inside the gym, which was to get another really cool Repel wear out. 
so much water. <laughs> Too much water. 78%. 7.8. Nice calm dive means I've always liked that. Okay, Aqua Hideout. Lots of puzzle times. And that guy right up there is another spinner, um, and that is why we've set up the repel the way we have. And just turn up. Now we can pass them this way. Um, I am actually going to heal to full. Yes, I'm going to go with full-ish. That is guaranteed pass him. Actually going to bike to this first boulder and then get off the bike because I have to accelerate the bike for the first tile each time I push a boulder so it's faster to just run. Another easy puzzle if you just know. Right, <laughs> right, left, up. On and off the bike to deload the audio track to get a faster transition, or reload the audio track to get a faster transition. This puzzle might hurt your head, but it's not that bad. <laughs> Probably struggled as a kid with that one. Yeah. Uh, this fight is slightly scary. If I if I had my revive, I wouldn't have actually uh, save or healed it for this one. I was considering saving, but it should be fine. It's also kind of weird with Tate and Liza. Sometimes you have a Pokemon alive, sometimes you don't. So even if you had the revive, it wouldn't really help because he has no other Pokemon. True. Okay, that was good. Ish. Slightly scared. But uh, one thing is that we actually um, we actually got full XP from Tate and Liza's Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So uh, I get level 39 here, which makes this Mighty in a 36% range instead of a 24% range, and it has Scary Face and uh, Swagger. So if it would die, that would be great. Okay, that is very bad. <laughs> oh, <Nope>. okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, uh, it's, this is still fine. No matter what happens here, I can't actually die. But uh, okay, Good. nice, one time lucky. Exactly once. Um, so. <laughs> The reason that it was actually fine there was because uh, had I hurt myself, I would have just healed, and then he would have switched to takedown and then taken himself out with a recoil. Uh, and now I'm at a pretty nice HP for the next fight, actually. Not a very hard puzzle. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I know, okay, guy I wanted me to mess that up so Still badly. Awkward. <laughs> Skips the Earthquake TM because can't even teach it, <laughs> even if you wanted to. <laughs> Too many agents. Yeah. Um, another scary fight. This fight is... There's a couple of combinations that make it really bad, and you also have to... This can't be too high, can't be too low HP thing going on again, so... Uh, too high HP gets you Confuse Ray and no Torrent. Too low HP and you die. It's like the Goldie ro Goldilocks run. Yeah, it is. Always right in the middle. It's a good way to look at it. I have four surfs left, exactly. Sometimes you need five, so you gotta watch out for that. Uh, this is what the other guard spec is for, to not get scary face. Scary face is very bad. Now it's really good. And now it's really good. <laughs> we want to see only scary face all the way down, actually. And by all the way down, I mean uh, this turn. Okay, 37. So now we speed on the Mighty Inna. Instead, I was planning on not doing that, but I'm guaranteed to tank tank down. Oh, that's actually so crazy. Um, so I still have my... So if I heal to 58, that's not good enough. So I guess I'll just do this. I've actually never seen that, ever. Okay, that actually is so... Yeah, yeah, yeah that's well. great. <laughs> wow. What have I just seen? Okay, so <laughs> one, one in there. that was horrible and then amazing <laughs> because uh, this Crobat is going to be faster than me and uh, he will hopefully, pretty sure it's close, hit me into Torrent here. 
30 stats. That's nice. Okay. Wow, perfect. <laughs> that was so weird. I crit anyway. Yeah. But, uh, the X speed is for the Sharpedo. The Crobat's always faster than you, I think. Okay, nice. Um, so now we'll be making our way to maybe not the hardest trick in the game, but definitely the scariest trick in the game, uh, Kyogre manipulation. We will be manipulating Kyogre's stats and the fact that it gets in the one netball that we picked up. Um, so that'll happen in, I don't know, like six or seven minutes, something like that. Uh, so we have time for donations pretty much until then. Oh, wow, all right. Well, good thing we have a lot of donations. <laughs> I have one here from Nathfan for $52. He says, Meowth used payday. Mike Tyson picked up $52. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, one here from Steven for $34. He says, here's $34 for my favorite Pokemon, Nidoking. Good choice. $133 from Star Creator, donating $133 for the best Pokemon, Eevee. Lots of Eevee love. Professor Creighton gives $10.70. 107 for Hitmonchan, who's ready to cheer on his fellow punching partner, Little Mac. Let's meet that punch-out incentive. You guys have been doing a wonderful job. We are almost up to $70,000 out of that $75,000. But this run has oh, about 15 minutes left in it, would you say? A little bit more, yeah. Uh, a little bit more, 20 minutes. Yeah. $5,000 in 20 minutes? You guys think we could do it? Oh, easily. We're actually 20, 20 to 30. <laughs> <laughs> 20 to 30. All right, you might you might have a little padding there. Yeah. Get your donations in. Let well, us know if you need to slow down a bit as well. We can do that for you. <laughs> Wait, I can do that. <laughs> We've already been doing it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was harsh. That was, that was uncalled for. <laughs> it's rough. I have a donation here for $430 from an anonymous donor. $430 for number 430, Honk Grow. Nice movement. <laughs> Everybody was behind you, anonymous, until you had to throw that honk in there. <laughs> it's Honk Grow. Uh, $7.43 here from Seraph, donating for my favorite newer Pokemon, Ribombi. Let's get that blindfolded punch out run met. And $5 here from Jerf, who says, Why can't you blindfold a Pokemon? Because it will Pikachu. <laughs> that one got some applause. <laughs> <laughs> like groans and applause. Okay, this cave sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anytime you need. Oh, 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 oh. Whoa. No. Oh. Okay, it's over. Close. Very close. It's actually faster to just run in this room because every time you get the like shaking, it, uh, it decelerates the bike and it's way easier. And now it's time for our good friend Kyogre. All right, we'll need serious time here as well. It's a four-frame window for the stats, three-frame windows for the catch, basically. <laughs> every, uh, every failure costs 45 seconds. So hopefully we can get it. Ah, uh, it's late, I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Oh, oh yes. yes. First try. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is really difficult. Oh, oh <laughs> Kyogre name? Kyogre name? Sorry. That was the Kyogre name. Uh, Big Hug, maybe? It's probably oh, I'm Big sorry, Hug. I'm sorry, I'm uh, sorry. The name here is Magikarp. Magikarp. Oh, Magikarp. Oh. Oh, debated. From behind. I got sniped. <laughs> sniped. That was with the 
$2,534. Big Hug was at $2,447, so that really was a snipe. Okay, so now we have to see what Kyogre we got. Um, it's gonna be hasty. It's gonna be hasty? Yep. Okay, that'll be nice. That is Close. mild. We'll take it. Okay, <laughs> nice. That is all, one of the best ones. Uh, so I'm actually going to teach over Hydro Pump here because we got the mild Mudkip, which has, uh, and I know by, by its HP value, by the way. Um, it has a plus special attack nature and really good special attack, so I don't actually need Hydro Pump. I need a move that hits a lot, not a move that hits really hard, because Kyogre's <laughs> OP enough. Equip the Prism. Probably been wondering why I haven't used this for a candy. Well, it's because it was for Kyogre. Uh, that was plus three. Probably should have maybe checked that. Yeah, actually, let's, you know, just just in case. <laughs> uh, it is indeed mild. So, let's get out of here. Now it's time for the easiest gym in the game, the last one. Uh, <laughs> but I'm scared. <laughs> uh, <interesting> menu. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, I promised myself that I wouldn't save for this. It's so, it's so easy. I cannot stress to you how easy this is. <laughs> but, if you were to somehow <laughs> make a mistake for this, well, you'll see later, but. Personal goals met. Wow. <laughs> so you'll see, uh, if you're not familiar with this game, right after this fight, you will see why it is so crazy bad <laughs> if, you, if you make a mistake there. Can we add 20 minutes to the estimate, please? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, you need more estimate. Probably faster to reset the It would. It, it would be yeah. faster to do Fire Drum and it begin. That's how bad it is. Yeah. Um, and if you may have noticed, this is the first gym leader in the entire run that we don't save for, the eighth one. Uh, Kyogre is, well, I have enough faith in him. A Magikarp, I mean. Strong Magikarp. So we're going to set up an X special on the Switch Cache. It's probably going to Amnesia. It, uh, it does Amnesia. Uh, so this Surf is actually a damage range to kill, but Hydro Pump is more likely to miss than this is to not kill, so uh, better to just Surf. Good. Can be really bad if that lives. Yep. Like, really bad. But, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, if he had a worse Kyogre, or at least worse special attack, he would have kept Hydro Pump for that. Yes, uh, pretty much any Kyogre, except the uh, Calm. Any non-Manip or uh, Hasty or Hardy. So this Key King is faster, and it knows Water Pulse, but we still have our Persian very active, and that's why the main reason that we have it is in case he confuses us. Um, Three Pokemon in this fight can confuse you, actually. <laughs> uh, and this Melodic takes two hits to kill, so if we crit, that would be cool, but it's not actually a threat since we have the Persian Berry still. I just want to jump in here real quick to say that we made it. We're going to be watching that two players, one hey. controller, blindfolded. Mike Tyson's punch out. Thank you, everyone, for your generosity. So, uh, this, as you'll see here, is why it is so, so bad if you mess up this ice puzzle. Because if you were to fall down, which we're about to fall down because you have to to exit the gym, um, then every one of the trainers that you're about to see are active trainers. That just can, count that them. To you. <laughs> Four, six, eight trainers. <laughs> uh, so thankfully, we did not make that mistake. It's really just the last puzzle that's like crazy costly, but I mean, two trainers is so ridiculous if on the first. Right, but you know, how are you gonna mess up the first one? <laughs> Don't put it past me. 
times. I've seen Tyrant do it. <laughs> I don't think I've actually ever messed up any of those puzzles, even in practice, but that's why I was even more scared, right? Mystic Water to, uh, what? Where was the person Where, berry? Okay. <laughs> Did I not give him a person berry? I think you actually took it off in one of the menus. Uh, I don't know. Well, good thing we didn't get confused. Yeah. It was actually faster. Yeah, exactly. Because we didn't have to replace the not active, uh, or the equipped person berry. I uh, did already teach Waterfall. Uh, sometimes you haven't taught Waterfall yet because you have a different Kyogre. The Repel's not friendly, but it's okay. Nothing you can do about that one. <laughs> Uh, Victory Road is crazy hard uh, to do. If you were trying to actually do it perfectly, it would be like pretty much impossible. Not task only, but pretty close. I think someone did a like bonkless Victory Road and they grinded for it for a pretty long time. Yeah, I mean it would. I've gotten pretty far before, but I've never actually done it perfectly until today. And I don't think that we will see it today. <laughs> But we'll see. I'll give it my absolute best shot. We have a good start here. Nice. nice. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> this part in particular is difficult. Mm -hmm. It's dark as like nice. one tile thick movement. It's really hard. Yeah, this is awful. But <laughs> it is very difficult. You've walked like 25 less times than I would, so. Nice. Already going pretty good. I believe in you. You do a little better than that. Yeah, maybe 20 bonks less. Your keys are on. Oh. Oh. I love Guys, keys. just wait till he mercy kills Animorphs again. It's fine. <laughs> I'm about to have a very stern interview after this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, Kyogre, especially this in particular, mild Kyogre, pretty much shreds everything. Uh, I do have to play a little safe in some spots, but overall, uh, this guy's a monster, and that's why we switched to him. Something else about the Kyogre, it has Drizzle, which sets the rain to surf even more powerful, but it is a little slow, but... That's good. Uh, yeah, all these, all these trainer fights are trivial. Nothing can actually go wrong. The worst thing that can happen in this entire place is this Nine Tails can use Quick Attack. So. What if it crits? <laughs> Um, so, I mean, I'll just be doing Victory Road movement. Uh, there's nothing really to talk about. So if you want to read donations until the end of Victory Road, then that's fine. All right, I have a $25 donation here from Sir Nicholas. He says, here's $25 for the Pokemon that started it all, Pikachu. I'll donate $5 more if the announcer will do her best. Pika pee. That was good. That was good. I had to practice that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I have a $59 donation here from Swift Revolution who says donating 50 Arcanine dollars. And I think I found the reason that uh, Kyogre's name was sniped. Shout outs to the actual best Pokemon, Corviknight, put this donation towards naming Kyogre Magikarp. That was from Chaboy Greg for $850. Wow. Whoa. Thanks, Chaboy Greg. That Magikarp only cost $500. <laughs> cost me one frame each time I send it out. <laughs> Over the previous name. <laughs> yeah, you guys wanted this run to be like eight frames longer. Nice. Ooh. That one's tough. It's these like little time saves with the mock bike are kind of cool. He's getting right in front of the trainers and that movement's like way harder than if you were to make him walk one or two tiles to you. But Yep, and every bonk on the mock bike costs uh, at best half a second, but like it's usually pretty hard to recover from it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's usually closer to about a second. So practicing your mock biking is super important for getting good at this game and also run into bikes. Uh, which I missed some of this run, but yeah. happens. Didn't get, didn't get punished. Is this run no optionals? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no nice. optionals. Also a personal goal. 
it's pretty hard to get through the entire game without hitting any optional trainers, if you count spinners as optionals, which you should. Mm -hmm. I think it was only three resets as well, so not bad at all. Uh, we had a Norman death, we had uh, the Flannery, Flannery and then... Uh, Brawly. Brawly, yeah. Not bad at all, honestly. Except the deaths were super slow. Except for Brawly. <laughs> yeah, they were so <laughs> slow. Uh, Brawly was fast, but... Uh, both both the Flannery death and the Norman death were like two minutes each. Yeah. But it's okay. This run has been uh, has been nice. I've enjoyed it. First try Kyogre. Can't ask yeah. for better than that. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was really that good. was awesome. That was definitely what I was most scared about uh, coming into this run. So. Mm -hmm. And you can also just uh, take the Pansy route and pick up the Master Ball, which costs a minute. <laughs> Um, but even if you get second try Kyogre Minip, it's still faster than the Master Ball, and you have to Minip the stats anyway. So, just be good. Master Ball only saves the three-frame window. It doesn't save the four-frame one, so you may as well just go for it. Yeah, you're really going to practice for a four-frame window, not practice for a three-frame window. Adam. Yeah. It does get exponentially harder, actually, but... Um, but, yeah. Okay, so Elite Four is definitely, like, so much better with a Manipped Kyogre. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, this Kyogre in particular, I think, has 25 IV special attack plus nature with, like, really good speed, 24 or something. Uh, and really, speed and special attack are the important ones uh, for these fights. I will outspeed, like, pretty much everything, if not everything. No, you do have to speed for the, uh, for the Drake fight, but... Drake has a cell. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, what's crazy is the Flygons, I think, actually, have speed you, too. And they have Sandstorm, and that's super slow. <laughs> yeah, if you have to hasty, then you don't have to X speed for that fight. Yep, you can get a plus speed Kyogre and get to skip speed on that fight, and you actually do an extra speed on a different fight that uh, lets you out speed some stuff just barely. On the gym leader fight. It's kind of cool how there's so many different Kyogres that just have all these like slightly different strats. It's interesting. Well, back in the day, you used to have, <laughs> like, <laughs> before we knew how to manip Kyogres, you would get a Kyogre and you're like, all right, well, this one has zero special attack IV and minus nature and good attack. <laughs> Are we body slamming now? Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> jolly Kyogre. It's the same with the uh, Rayquaza and Emerald. It's like, do we get X attacks? Do we get X specials? Yeah, manip, manip definitely streamlines what, what you need to know, mm -hmm. um, but it also makes you have to do a really tight frame window manip up on stage in front of a bunch of people, and it's really scary. <laughs> 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 but we did it. Uh, that torpedo was notorious for outspeeding you when you didn't have manipped Kyogres, but now we do. Snatch is priority. It's not actually fast. Only good uses to have this move, so an issue. And then uh, this... Shift Tree has Fake Out, which it usually uses, but we hope it doesn't. Oh, wow. Wow. I've never seen a Fake Out. <laughs> okay, so now we get to see the uh, biggest benefit of having the mild Kyogre, I get to go for a uh, damage range on this Dusclops that is not worth going for for the others. It's like 53% yeah. to die to Surf, uh, which is worth it. Unfortunately, I would normally go for a Healus Elite Four with the mild if I get this range and no fake out, but because I don't have my revive, I actually can't risk it. Not that one. Yeah, there's one more. <laughs> yeah, not that one. <laughs> not that one. <laughs> Sorry. The big bad level 50 or something. <laughs> um, yeah, these these first two fights are pretty much free. Like, even if I don't hit the bell stop range, nothing bad happens, except maybe I get confused, possibly. And even if I don't, he can uh, he can shadow ball, and if it crits, it doesn't kill, and then you just win. There's nothing that I can actually disastrously go wrong. Yeah, Kyogre is a pretty big jump from the, uh, the swapper we were using earlier. Rain is just really insane. Like, the fact that it mm -hmm. comes with a 50% boost is just so nuts. Yeah. Uh, it, 
It basically makes level 45 Kyogre like as strong as level 70 Rayquaza for this like type of run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, it has Torrent at all times and yeah. better Torrent. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know, it's nuts. Here we go. All right, 51, in, in fact. Do it, Magic Carp. No, yeah. Nyx was right. We got the range of GDQ. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Magic Carp. Good job. As much as I would, I think I'll just do this. As much as I would like to uh, not heal and save, uh, I think it's without the revive, you just kind of have to. You can get chain uh, body slam paralyzed in this fight, and it has happened to me, and it's fresh on my mind, so I'm too scared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this name's a great move. So we're gonna lead with X special here. Uh, it does not die to surf if you don't, and it will always hail on turn one. I would continue setting up on this Lely, but it has light screen, which I cannot let it do. It's unfortunate she changes the weather because there goes 50% of our power. Yeah, we still have to shockwave in this fight too, so we'd have to set up a bunch of specs anyway, but it would make it uh, better for sure. Mm -hmm. Also, hail damage is really annoying and slow. But you always get hail there, so it's not like this is technically time loss. Two or three? Two. Uh, I, think it, I think it was two. Yeah, I think that's two as well. Yeah, because I should have two. Or actually, no. Have I used an extra expect this round? I think I might have just used an extra, but it's okay. If not. Full heal. Please don't do it. Please. You've got to be kidding I me. just... I, every time. Not this one. Please, 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 please don't. Oh my god. Wow. Three in a row. It's 30%, so. I'm actually really low on healing items, too, unfortunately. Yeah. Do I, I actually might just have to reset. Uh, because. You'd max at like 50 HP, I think. Yeah, I don't actually have enough healing items, right? Scale stops, scales again. Yeah, no, I just I don't have enough yeah. healing items to win. That's just unfortunate. Well, at least I saved. Yeah. Nothing I could have done about that. Yeah, it's, what was that, 0.9% to get triple paralyzed? <laughs> it's okay. Or three, three percent, I think. It's ridiculous. Also, maybe could have healed before the fight, but you know. Yeah. I mean, usually there's no reason to. Uh, stack. And if you just don't get paralyzed on, see, if you don't get paralyzed on actually the first turn, then you can just set up on a different Pokemon. So, mm -hmm. like. It wasn't just getting paralyzed a bunch of times in a row, it was also getting paralyzed instantly and also for every single turn after that. <laughs> 30%, by the way, per turn. But you do have to expect on this uh, poke because it won't die to Shockwave if you don't. And I did use an extra spec. Okay. Uh, okay, now, so, yeah. so now, Shockwave. <laughs> now, hail should stop on this turn, or 
which is what would have happened last time if I just didn't get paralyzed on the first turn. And now I set up my last spec. He hails. And we win. Uh, so the reason we have to set up three uh, is because the uh, the final poke is a Walrin, Walrin, and this thing has sheer cold, so you have to kill it in one hit. It's not like you know, Gen 1 and Gen 2 where you have to be faster. It's based off the level in this gen, so it is higher level than you, so it can hit sheer cold. Don't want to deal with that. He only has two text boxes, man. Why? <laughs> I'm going to heal for the skull. Uh, nothing can really go wrong in this fight either. The uh, You have to set up 1x speed. Uh, you can also get Protect from Shogun, which can force you to go for a range on the Flygon with Surf, but he does not like to protect. Okay. Now, most likely this Altaria will Dragon Dance. On the turn that we X speed, we'll still be faster and then we'll sweep the fight. I wish I had my revive. I have to actually have to heal again because I will die to a critical specific move on the last fight, and we can't have that because mm -hmm. we know it's going to happen. <laughs> it's really nice this fight, like his whole team's 4x weak to ace beam. You just come with it. It's perfect. Yep, and this mild gets the benefit of uh, surfing this Flygon, which saves super effective attacks. Fight, the champion fight. If Tate and Liza is X speed and adapt, this fight is X special and win. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you can get crit. It's funny, this is pretty much the same exact HP as I had in, in record. Uh, and I did not say, or did not heal. But I will here. It is the last thing standing between me and being done with a super, super, super difficult uh, to not die speed game. So. Just gonna use our last super and have a 100% win rate on this fight. Actually, cannot lose from here. Even if we were to get the worst possible combination, which is toxic hit into heal it off into a steel wing crit, I would still win. So. <laughs> Okay. And there we go. Uh, everything in this fight dies in one hit. There's nothing that can go wrong. So it's over. He's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> That's the click right. Shout out to Pokemon speedrunning community in general uh, for coming this far with this run. The RNG manipulations, the routing, the what this run has become is crazy. So uh, thank you everyone for that. And uh, if you're interested in Pokemon speedrunning, then stop by my stream 
and uh, or the PSR Discord. It's a good place to to learn about it. It's a pretty friendly community, welcoming to newcomers. So, uh, do you guys have anyone you want to shout out? Uh, check out the Discord if you guys want to learn Pokemon speedruns. Great community. Love new people. Yep. Shout out to my family. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. <laughs> Hi, mom. Time will be coming up here pretty soon. Yep. Just, uh, for the start here. And time. Yeah. That's not what time is. Is that right? Right. Yeah. So uh, thank you guys for watching. This was Pokemon Sapphire at GDQ. The craziest thing I've ever personally done. <laughs> <laughs> this, game, this game is super brutal. It's super likely to kill you, but it's really fun to run. So uh, I still wouldn't recommend doing it. But <laughs> um, yeah, thank you guys for, for enjoying this run. an amazing run that was. Thank you so much, Gunner Maniac. And we have a little Twitch ad for you guys, and then we'll be right back. All right, and coming up, we have an interview with the runner for our run a little later this night, TVG Badger. Take it away. Hello, everybody. Welcome back from the ad break. My name is Jay Hobbs, and I am joined by the runner for Terraria, like was just mentioned, Badger. Badger, how are you doing? Hey, AGDQ, what's going on? It's Badger here. I'm extremely excited to be here today, running Terraria for the first time at an AGDQ. Thank you for having me. Thank you for supporting uh, Prevent Cancer Foundation, thanks for being here. Thanks to all attendees in the audience. Thanks for the awesome energy here. It's absolutely electric. If you missed out on coming to AGDQ this year, you definitely should have come here because it is a fantastic place to be with <laughs> awesome people, seriously. Well, thank you for doing my job for me. There we go. <laughs> oh, sorry. You, you, you should, no, you should just do the Oops. whole interview. Yeah, no, no I got it. I'll interview myself. <laughs> no. we, have, we have social media questions here. I get, okay, uh, we'll get into that. Hey, we'll get up? into that in a minute. But first, I do want to ask you about Terraria. So Terraria is a game that I think most people would not immediately think think of when they think of speedrunning, right? That similar to like we've had Minecraft in the past, obviously the comparisons there are, are bountiful. <laughs> mm, indeed. Um, but in general, you know, it's one of those kind of survival adventure games. Uh, why Terraria for you? What is it about it that makes you want to speedrun it? 
Uh, that's actually really easy for me to say. It, the number one thing that keeps bringing me back to Raria is actually just the community, uh, the the love, the passion, the, the the art, and everything that the Terraria community does makes it such an incredible thing, well beyond the game. And I know it's a sandbox game, and people are like, oh, you run, a, you speed run a sandbox game is quite strange. But actually, the community itself has lots of different goals that we like to entertain, lots of different challenges like what we like to do. So actually, the sandbox aspect of it, it opens it up to so many different categories and so many different things that you can do in the game that it gives it an incredible replayability value. Uh, right now, Atari is $10 on Steam. I played 4.5 thousand hours of the game. <laughs> wow. Talk, talk about a value. Because imagine going to a movie theater and paying that premium for, you know, one hour and 30 minutes. Right. There, there's just so much to do in Ferrari <laughs> that I can just keep coming back to it uh, day well, after day. Well, you mentioned the sandbox aspect, how there's a bunch of different goals and categories you can do. What are we going to be seeing from you later tonight, and why should everybody tune into that? Uh, uh, so we're, we're beating the last boss in Terraria. Uh, Moon Lord was added in 2015. So Terraria came out in 2011, uh, has been updated and patched and iterated upon uh, for eight years now with wow. totally free content. Uh, all of the updates that have happened. So uh, 2015, uh, 1.3 came out, which was a free update, no DLC, no $10 fee, that r totally redid the entire game. It uh, added a new difficulty level, it added new bosses, and it added the Moon Lord boss, which is an absolutely fantastic and visually stunning fight that we're going to be racing to in, in, in an incredible, really, uh, on this patch of Terraria, less than an hour to this boss. Super cool. I'm looking forward to it. And so are a lot of people out there because we actually asked you all on social media uh, for some questions for you about Terraria, about the run. So let's go ahead and get right into them. So we got Vembat is asking a really heavy one. I liked this question the second I saw it. <laughs> yeah, I know the, you did. <laughs> yeah, the RNG involved in long runs can be devastating. So if you had the option, would you get rid of it or would you not and why? So this is the thing about speedrunning. The, 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 there's moments for us where our heart is absolutely pounding, when something is just going so right. And those are the moments that we really love speedrunning for. Those are the things that really drive us forward. So absolutely not. I wouldn't take those RNG moments out because they, they make it really special. They make it powerful. They make yeah. it uh, epic a lot of the times. Yeah, and adapting to it is a skill in its own right. Yes, right? it really, it <laughs> honestly is. Yeah. Not giving up is a lot of things that you learn from speedrunning, honestly. When you're down on your luck, who knows when you can make a time save you, if you just persist. Yeah. Our next question comes from Chinese or Kainsi. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that. I apologize. <laughs> uh, they ask, what is the most bizarre challenge or handicap for a run you've done? I know that's something that's very popular with all of these kinds of like survival, combat, mm -hmm. and crafting games, stuff like that. Yeah, just for the YouTube views, honestly, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I did no jumping. Uh, the hardest difficulty on a hardcore character, meaning wow. if my HP is reduced to zero at any point, I die. And we did no jumping. So we just couldn't hit the jump button. It was really weird. Uh, to play the game without jumping is very awkward. It's like playing Mario without jumping. Like it's just, but it was really fun. It was really interesting. <laughs> to iterate on this. I love doing challenge runs in Terraria. And that's one of the ways you keep the game fresh by doing those kind of crazy things like that. Yeah, I have to check out some of those after the event because <laughs> first we gotta, we gotta see the base game first before, <laughs> so we can know what's, what's going on. You're gonna see it real fast today. <laughs> All right, we got another social media question here from Rodney5756. <laughs> says, <laughs> I'm sure you're biased, <laughs> but which is better, Terraria or Minecraft? And why is it Terraria? So, so I think this is, I love the end to that, why is it Terraria? Yeah. Uh, I think it's actually a really easy question that you, maybe the answer you're not going to expect. They're just different games. Uh, Terraria is very combat-oriented compared to Minecraft, but really both of them are, are very enjoyable in different ways. If you didn't know, in Terraria and actually in Minecraft as well, they both make references to one another, and they're actually pretty friendly with one another, and they've uh, supported one another throughout their development phases. So they, they actually are friends. So if you have, like, you know, oh, Minecraft's better, Terraria is better, really, we're all gaming together and really enjoying our experiences. So Terraria is definitely better, yes. But it's okay if you like Minecraft, too. Uh, very, very fast question for the last social media question for you here. From <laughs> Pyrosar, what's the silliest way that you have ever died in Terraria? This, this is a very interesting question because uh, there is a glitch in Terraria involving uh, duplication of items, which allows us to get a very rare item called a random teleportation potion. What that potion does is it allows us to change our position on the map to any point in the map absolutely randomly. Uh, and there is a thing that you can do is you accidentally jump, use the uh, RTP potion, random teleportation <laughs> potion, and, and, and uh, go down on the map. You actually take all the fall damage that you would take in if you had fall the entire distance. So I discovered that by jumping and then using my teleportation and suddenly taking 9,999 damage. Uh, <laughs> it was pretty shocking. It was during a really good run that I discovered this. And, uh, it, it was fun, it was silly, and uh, pretty brutal, actually. <laughs> All right, well, my final question for you is, what is happening at your feet right I, now? I don't even know what to say to you. Uh, this was definitely not planned. There is a huge... <laughs> can you see this? HGQ, <laughs> can you see this right now? This is Scent here, obviously, wearing white gloves. His, I'm pretty sure his mic is off. You can't... Hi. Uh, <laughs> you can't... 
<laughs> this uh, th this did not get framed how I thought it was going to. <laughs> so, I'm just you know what? We're gonna... question, and he's he's on his <laughs> back. He didn't do it forward. He did it backwards. <laughs> We're gonna pretend this was all very intentional. <laughs> I, I, I just met him just now. This is the impression I've gotten from him. This, this is the AGDQ this, fan. This is the first what? impression. Yeah. I, already, right. said, I, I, I got prizes. <laughs> well, I can explain. explain. I can explain. explain. There are prizes. <laughs> Please, please explain yourself. Sure. And please do it right. quickly because we, we got to get ready for that run. Of course, of course. So we got a bunch of great prizes for you guys. This is the absolute last chance to get in on a couple of super cool ones because as soon as that blindfolded co-op punch-out run starts, these prizes are going to be closed. Uh, from our friend Dot Decor, we have a beautiful Joe Musashi dot art from Shinobi 3. It's uh, the Shinobi 3 protagonist made entirely of colored dots. It's super cool. And of course, I cannot stop talking about this absolutely amazing Pokemon cross-stitch. It's all 151 oh, wow. Pokemon. $25 minimum wow. donation, but you got to get it in right now. Yeah, all 151, the ones that matter. The, the ones, ones that, that matter. matter. And mm -hmm. they look it again. so good. Here, I'm going to put it over <laughs> me like a blind while well, I talk about some of the other awesome prizes that we have going from now until the start of the Legend of Zelda relay a little bit later tonight. Um, from our good friend Pearl Pop, $15 minimum donation. We have this beautiful EV parlor. Yes, this is a parlor. This is not acrylic. This is individual beads melted perfectly. It's so perfectly. good. Huge, huge fan of it. Um, we have some great stuff. This is only a $10 minimum donation. Now, chat, get ready to say it with me. Uh, come on. Yeah, you, you know what it is. <laughs> you know what it is. There's an LED here. I can't figure out how to work it, but you can light up the bottom of it. There's a nice Hylian crest inside. It's beautiful, and it's only a $10 minimum donation. Come on. It's so good. Shout out to Cute Monster Props for making that happen, sending it out to us. Uh, guys, and of course, last but not least, we have an absolutely amazing Zant cross stitch from our friend uh, uh, Renek. Uh, let me just pull it out of its tube here. It is beautiful. Uh, you know, to go along with that lovely Pokemon cross-stitch. Look at these amazing cross-stitches. $20 for this one, $25 for the other one. Get those donations in right now. And, Incredible. of course, don't forget the grand prize, $200 cumulative throughout the marathon. Hobbs, always good being here. Um, right, it's you. always good being down there sometimes, too, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll, we, we'll just find you in new places every interview. But thank you, Sen, and thank you, Badger. Hey, good Hobbs, luck on your run here. later. Thanks Everybody, so much for having me. Be uh, sure. Also, this great artwork, I just want to... Oh, almost, yeah. We almost missed this. This is beautiful. This <laughs> yeah. is the boss that we're going to. It's a, it's a little bit more beautiful in-game, but it is also <laughs> fantastic here. <laughs> yeah, LLK does all the artwork. Fantastic. But we will be seeing Terraria a little bit later tonight. But first, we are almost ready to go with that Mike Tyson's punch-out run being run by Sinister One and Zallard. Can we, can we see? Is anybody excited for that one? Yeah! yeah I thought so. Blindfolded. I'm going to throw it back up to the host. Get ready. Thank you, Jay Hobbs. What is up, friends? This is Awesome Games Done Quick 2020. I am Mr. Game and Shout. And like Jay Hobbs said, we are getting ready for something really special here. Two player, one controller, blindfolded Mike Tyson's punch out. As though they weren't already good enough to beat this game with one hand tied behind their back, they're doing it together with blindfolds. I have no idea. This is going to be amazing. We're going to work on some donations while they are still completing setup for that. I've got $15 here from Meskimo. Punch-Out! is one of my new favorite games in no small part thanks to the wild runs of the series at AGDQs. Absolutely insane what the runners can pull off. I also want to catch up on some of the donations that we had during that Pokemon run. We've got $25 here from Tails Faraga. I heard something about Eevees, so take my money, please. There's also $135 we got from Ilpala. My favorite spiky boy is so late in the first gen, but here's $135 for Jolteon. And Kella sent $58, donating $58 during the Pokemon Sapphire run in honor of my beloved Growlithe.
We also had $7 from Squirtle Squad. Donating $7 for my son's favorite and best starter Pokemon, number seven, Squirtle. We had a $54 do donation come in from Sharky, donating $54 for my favorite Pokemon, the one and only Voolagen. <laughs> Please put this towards bonus game two. We sure did that. So we can focus on the real final boss, Mutsky singing Eyes on Me. For those of you who may not have checked the schedule, we do have that Final Fantasy VIII run coming up later tonight. That is going to be a marathon. I am looking forward to it. Dave Dunn did it, sent us $25. Games get done at you pretty quick. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you just might miss them, unless you have 100% accuracy. Twist Maze Little Passage sent in $500. Their comment, blinded by the mic. We had another $500 come in from Iceborne Queen. I look forward to this event every year. A great week of gaming for a great cause. Let's beat cancer and meet that punch out incentive. We absolutely nailed that. You all absolutely nailed that. We could not have done this without you. Yeah, you earned that. <laughs> 